This is episode 11 of English VoiceOver in Asia. I am your host, Yui Haruhara. I was told it was impossible. I was told it couldn't be done. But here I am today with an interview I could have only dreamt of. Jack Murphy, business partner of Simon Broad and director and voice talent of many Hong Kong anime dubs. My interview with Jack Murphy was by far my longest interview yet. That's not a bad thing though, because what I took away from this interview was invaluable. In fact, this isn't even my first conversation with him. I had a call with him prior to the one you're about to hear, in which he and I got to know each other and he answered questions about specific anime dubs he worked on. He even answered one of my burning questions about k which was about who voiced Samugi in Season 2. Those of you subbed on YouTube have likely already seen that video. The interview you are about to hear is the quote-unquote formal interview. Now you may notice, unlike other guests so far, Jack's picture is only an X. Jack has requested to not use a photo on his profile and wishes for that in my videos as well. Jack isn't much for doing interviews. I'm the first one to even interview him like this. But he was kind enough to share his history and insight on dubbing and more. Without further ado, here's my interview with Jack Murphy. So go ahead and introduce yourself. My name is Jack Murphy. I do the English versions for um, a company originally called Sound Supply, then SDI bought them out and then now it's owned by a you know a Japanese company which I don't I don't do really much any more English product because that's not what they're focused on now you said you did some English versions what other positions or jobs do you hold or have you held like writer translator etc oh gosh well no I mean because it, it's it, I this is my own small company with another guy um, named Simon Broad and so, you know, I mean, there's not really positions. I've done everything in that, in that anything, you know, and there are good things. There are things that I'm okay at and there's some things that I'm just not, but I've still done them all um, because that's just the kind of the nature of the business. But I would prefer not to write script um, okay. because I'm not a good script writer. What got you into acting? My business partner, who was actually doing a lot of dubbing, he was one of the, you know, the 80s and early 90s dubbers in Hong Kong. He did everything. Um, so that was how I kind of was introduced into the business, um, where it was originally doing movies and TV shows. Um, that's what he did. But he was also part of the Godzilla days as well. Um, so that was really my introduction into anything to do with, um, you know, performance. And it didn't even start with me performing. It really did start with me just listening and just sitting there, hours just listening. You know, eventually, because the circumstance, you know, I had to, to, to jump in and do it. And I was given a chance. And it wasn't because there was any kind of like, oh, we have, you know, we've seen you in this. No, there was nothing. Just, you know, someone risked it and said, hey, you know, because of Simon. <laughs> you know, that was the opportunity. I mean, it was it was a connection. It wasn't anything that I did. Um, so, no, there's no there's no acting at all before that point. OK. Um, and even then it was like, you know, thank you. So that's your, um, how you got your start in professional work. That that is how you got your start. <laughs> Yeah, it is. I mean, but I, yeah. So, I mean, but it was, you know, it wasn't so kind of like matter of fact. It was. It was just doing a lot of stuff that just, you know, you know, I had to put the hours in like anything. Right. I, I think you're not going to be good. At, well, there are the potential that you are, you have something natural and you're gifted in that. And I didn't, you know, so it was kind of like, okay, we're going to have to put the hours and the time in. And eventually, because the hours were listening to people, I was able to kind of, you know, mimic that in a way and make it my own in some ways. But there still had to be that that jumping off block. But even then, it, it differs what you're talking about when you're doing using your voice from Hong Kong dubbing is completely different than any other place in the world. It's just very specific. Um, and same with the way they do with their Cantonese as well. So right. it's a very specific, different art in itself so that allows for someone like me who isn't doesn't have any kind of acting chops at all to get into it because it is a very unique different situation which we can go into later on i mean it, you know yeah so you said <clears throat> you worked with simon broad on you know sdi media now i you know 
What have you worked with any other dubbing studios over the years, or is that it? Oh gosh, no. I, I I've worked at you know there have been so many studios, but I wouldn't say I, I'm going to say it, but it's probably not even going to be true. I felt like I had exclusivity with a certain a few other studios as well, um, but the, obviously that's not the case because there was no contract signed or anything. It was just based on what I had done. But one of them is called MBS uh, Media Business Services. They do and they do all. The Hong Kong, I mean, uh, f- films and anything that comes through Hong Kong, they do it as well. But there's so many different studios now. It doesn't compare it to when I first started. But another studio I do, I started with, which was Nexon, and then another studio called Cine Digit. Um, so, but there is no work now per se that requires the same amount of time that they do a Cantonese version. So all these studios now are just purely working on the Chinese side, the Cantonese and, and, and the Putong Wa stuff. So there's not a lot of English stuff going on. Um, but those are the studios. And then to do voiceover work, you work with, um, you know, 50 studios, different studios a year. They come and go. So it's just, you know, now studios are, are really loosely defined. I mean, you just, you know, if you have a mic in a room yeah there's it's a studio okay. so a lot of because now it's so because you obviously know that there's a lot of stuff that you can do that you don't have to have what we used to have in order because it doesn't have to be broadcast quality yet you're still going to get a good sound quality so there's just a difference but yeah i mean i would say those are the main studios i started with and i would have to thank them all because they did give me the opportunity like a nexon um, gave me an opportunity to go in there and do movies that I had never done before, um, you know, and along with allowing those mistakes, you know, so not, you know, because Simon wasn't a part of it. He was, you know, dubbing it. Um, but at some point he had gone into another business. And so all that stuff that I had kind of learned from him, I had to put to, you know, put it in, you know, put it to do it. I had to do exactly what I was listening to. So yeah, I messed up a lot <laughs> and they, they were good. They, they, you know, they understood the budget was tight, the tight timeline. So you were never going to get a perfect product. Their philosophy was give us 70%. I didn't reach that 70%, but that's kind of philosophy. 70% is good. We're moving on. Um, you know, it's cheap and cheerful. Okay. So that was the early days, the, the, the movie stuff. Um, for mainly for Nexon, and I've done it for MBS now. Um, and I worked with one of the great, he, the owner of the company passed away, um, and his name was Henson. And he just gave me the first opportunity to st- for the bigger stuff, you know, for theater stuff, you know, theatrical release stuff. So he took a risk on me. Um, and, you know, and he passed away, unfortunately. But now his daughter actually run, runs a company, and it, it is, they do everything. Um, that's, I, I, worked with so many different stars in that studio. So it was a big risk on his end. And um, again, it was the, those people giving me the opportunity with really nothing to show for it. So I'm very thankful for the hours that I was able to kind of go in there, and, you know, and, and learn stuff, both from them and also just by my own mistakes. Now, this is going to be interesting because you basically ran the studio. <laughs> uh, what well, is... No, I did. I, I, I didn't run the studio at all. These are not my studios. No, I mean, I, I mean, you ran. I mean, you ran like a studio. Like you, you were very heavily involved with one. Well, yeah. I mean, very specific. I couldn't say po- the po- after going there recording. I was not involved in anything. No decision making. I wasn't there to d- do the mix. So I had no idea if they were moving stuff around or even if they were taking the right take. Sometimes, if it just was, they would use a different take. You know, mm-hmm. if if we had sound and I, and I didn't notice that we had sound interference or there was, you know, a, a drop, a noise in the background. So they would sometimes just use a different tape. So there was nothing. So when I did this, no, not from a studio side. They kept me in check there. I was given freedom to make, especially for like an on plan man, just to go loose on stuff because they just w- didn't want to get involved in that because it was, it was transcreation. They didn't have something like a translation for them to check in, me on. So okay. they let me go on that with other stuff. No, I was I wasn't involved in anything. Unfortunately, I wish I, I wish I was. Yeah, you know, I've seen some of the product where like Jesus, just move it. It wasn't. <laughs> it, it was right on time. Just move it. That's all you had to do. 
and they're and so for lip sync that's it or or even for the sound that the actual levels on certain, how it's played i feel like sometimes it's just the m e track it's just it's just a hong kong mix it's different and we didn't do any treatment on anything nothing we i mean ours was as, as almost as probably singapore would probably in the level that you know we were doing things because it was cheap it wasn't for any other reason I mean, right. I mean, we had to perform, but at the end, it was all about pricing, and we were able to match those prices, and that's the reason why SDI, you know, continued to work with me because I was able to do it for their price. Um, okay. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, what? So I was, yeah. So I wasn't involved in the studio outside <clears throat> at all. Sorry. No, that's fine. To that question. Yeah. Um, what is or was the casting slash audition process like in Hong Kong? Uh, I mean, for, for the English side, just it, things even before me were different. I hated doing castings. I wasn't paying people to do castings and I just hated to do them. So eventually we moved to the idea of we're just going to be an off shelf product rather than doing a casting um, per se. And I was said that I wanted to make those casting decisions because in the end I knew what the people, what I needed to do in order to get this thing done. I knew I needed to cover up certain aspects of what talent were able to do because well, they had to do 10 different voices. So they just weren't able to focus on one or two and just master that. We had to do a lot of different voices. And so I only knew that what I was able to kind of, it, I knew like someone like Mira was the most diverse. So I specifically had to cast around certain aspects of what I had available. Um, and so it, the casting wasn't because it was the best voice at all. You know, I was only very, I was ver working with a very small group of people. Um, that's all, that's all that I could afford. I couldn't bring anybody else on. So this is nothing like anything that you've seen before. Now that isn't generally shouldn't be the case, you know, where I've done worked on projects where I have done professional castings, you know, and I, you know, I gave them 10 voices per character. Um, as a selection. So, but that was for specific type. If it was a feature length movie or, or but it would, or, or generally was not going to happen with any of the cartoons I was doing specifically like the stuff that we talked about that we, we were doing with connection with um, Cartoon Network and Pogo Channel. At first they, they, they wanted to do a casting, but then because it was trans creation, then I was like, look, you know, Gutsy Frog was the first one. And we did do a casting because we are competing with other with other companies in Asia to get this. Um, it's just that we had we went in there knowing that we can be very playful with the dialogue, even though we were kind of handcuffed because it was, you know, we were very limited in what we could say. So we were still able to kind of capture something that was very unique and got, you know, and, and got the job. So there, there was a lot, you know, the, with, there was a lot of things that were done with that specific word in a casting situation where normally I wouldn't have done a casting. Um, but they're always insisting on it. So we would give them something off the shelf or I would get them to read over the phone rather than go into the studio and doing it. That's later years. But generally we're just in the studio. So if we need to do castings, it was just like, okay, here, I'm going to give you three options for this character, three options for this character. But I was only working for three to four women anyway. So, okay. and I was only going to bring in another, maybe four or five men. So we were only looking from anywhere, six to nine people. So th there weren't, I made wrong decisions. And I noticed you, this, we were talking, it was, um, uh, full metal alchemist brotherhood, the version that I did. And one of the characters I do, it's German accent. I did it because I needed something different. Right. You know, I, you know, I just, I just felt like, geez, I can't do the same. I just need something different. And I always did, and same thing, you made the comment about Muriel doing it in Anpai Man, where she um, she did this kind of the pseudo Eastern European voice, which I liked. It was fun. It was different. <laughs> it wasn't like the original. I didn't have to follow the original. Of course that not. was the thing. I was allowed to kind of go and do what I needed based on the talent that I had. Yeah. You know, so Muriel was very diverse and she did some good stuff. She didn't want to do it either. I said, you're going to do it. <laughs> she was like, why? And I'm like, because we're going to do it. <laughs> And I like it. So, so <laughs> damn, anybody who else doesn't like it, I like it. But I think it also has a little bit of a character to it. You know, there's right. the, which, which she did with it. I think that there was a lot of character. She did it. I, I enjoyed it very much. But I understand that maybe like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because um, 
America was the same way back when dubbing was much, much, much smaller. Um, these talent pools would be so small, they would have the same voice actor go in and do a Russian accent or a German accent or something for a character. Like, the early, <laughs> early days of Dragon Ball in Texas, they had one gentleman named uh, Chris Savitt do, like, 20 different characters because they just didn't have anybody. Right. So, so <laughs> well, no. I know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, so I, I get I, it. I, I might have had people, but I just couldn't. I couldn't afford them. Right. You know, I, I couldn't. So that that is yeah. There were other talent that I would love to have brought in, but you know, they they had this, another thing. Schedule was another concern. They were full time at something else, and you know, bring them in. They weren't really wanting to come in at nine o'clock at night, you know, for a couple hours and get up in the morning and get on to. So for the pay that, you know, so I was limited in what a, a series offered, like movies, one time things. Yeah, I would be a little bit more flexible with, with that one. Yeah, I, there are all the circumstances are the same thing that, yes, in the, you know, the early days of dubbing, days of dubbing that I, I, I've, 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 I live those circumstances. <laughs> That's all I've had to do. Right. So yeah, no, I I totally get it because that's that's that was been a thing here in America for a little bit. Now you have talent to spare. You have hundreds of people in rotation, but no, that's yeah, it's a lot more competitive. I mean, oh, I, yeah. I mean, and, and then it just must be. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I yeah, I the the yeah, that it's just something that you know the people that are listening and choosing these voices, they really are good at what they do. I mean, I, I, I mean, they because they, they have so much to choose from, that in order to, they're sp being very specific on what they want, and to me that 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 focus, and that attention to detail, um, you know, an understanding of the characters is amazing. That was a luxury I didn't have, and maybe if I did have. It, it, it was quickly pushed aside because the, the volume of work that I was dealing with. So th that was none of the luxury that I had. And right. for what they do now, you see it and you go, God, that's admirable. I mean, that, because of what, you know, you are, you're, you, you, the talent selection, the pool of it is a huge consideration for that. But, yeah. yeah. No, anyway. no, I, I, I say that uh, Hong Kong actors are rock stars for doing so many roles in a single show. <laughs> Yeah, and it's a single day in the three-hour oh, yeah. shift. Oh so, yeah. So there's, I mean, they're just going crazy, schizophrenia. I mean, seriously, they're. I mean, some of the Japanese cartoons are just so fucking out there to begin with. Right. And then if you're playing all these characters, it's you know, it's almost like, oh, well, I'm in. I don't know what world I'm in, but I've just come <laughs> out of one that I was in a box. <laughs> yeah. For three hours straight, <laughs> listening to Voice of America yell at me. So I, I'm sure a lot of people had to deal with that. Um, right and, and maybe scarred for life i'm sure a lot of them are, I, because i think in the end that you know the volume that you're trying to push through there was i think people had a lot of frustration because i would go through a scene you know like with you know if there's five or six different characters in that scene i go through it all not really hearing the playback from you know the original in order to get things done correctly so those are the drawbacks i think that you have um when you do obviously the volume that you yeah. know you just churn it and burn it. And like when I hear people say they're doing one episode a day, I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> that's that must be fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I I just I just recalled what you're talking about. Yeah, with Muriel and Anpanman. Yeah, as uh the mini man. Yeah, as mini man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. <laughs> and there. Yeah. Just that. That's a but see, I I she did not want to do it. That's so and funny. I, and I said, we're do we're doing it. Yeah, it's um when I was talking to Gia about the American version, uh, Jason Kesser voices that character in the American version. And, um, I I haven't spoken to the man, but um, what Gia described it as is it sounds like um, Gilbert Gottfried on crack. Oh, oh, really? Oh, <laughs> That's, interesting. Yeah, it, it's good. It's a good voice. Yeah, see, I mean, do you? I mean, do you? Obviously, because you you grew up probably watching like adult men doing with japanese original japanese product were done pardon me do you do you do you like that sound do you, do you like that sound better of like the you know what we generally hear in the west is the a, a male doing 
the, the voice of a of a boy rather than a girl doing. Uh, like, it really depends on the boy. character. If it's uh, a li if it's a young boy, obviously a female or an actual young boy would be better. But like for Biking Mon in Japanese, he's voiced by a man. And right, right. yeah, a very 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 famous one too. But um, no, I I thought Muriel's voice for it was pretty funny. Um, for um, Meaty Man slash Biking Mon, depending on what version you're watching, but. Um, yeah, that's it. We, we, yeah, that was when I was like, Spiky Man, I don't know who is it, Spiky Man, you're saying? Yeah, bi yeah, bi biking. Yeah, biking. It's, biking. Uh, yeah, it's, um, okay, biking. Yeah, okay, it's yeah in, in your dub, it's, uh, Mini Man. Yeah, it's Mini Man. We changed it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't even, I don't even know if we, I think we gave them a cast list of potential names and they chose from that. Okay. Uh, in the early stages, but even then, as as on Pan then went on, we changed so much. Even the, what we did in it, like I said, it's very collegiate sounding when we first started, and it was going that way. And then I split everybody up, and then it sounded something That's completely so interesting. different. Like, and lost. It's kind of I think I think the r r early versions. I think that they're just raw. Okay. They're just raw, and the, and it just the whole thing is captured. But I have not heard it. That's the thing. I I'm only think what I remember. I wasn't even there for the final mix or anything. Huh. So I'm just going on experience that I had, and and I know what Simon brought, and I know the the, the room and the atmosphere with Candice and Muriel and Simon. That that collective energy kind of produced something that was very, like I said, it was very raw. It's collegiate sounding in a way, but very good. You know, which changed on years and with, the, you know, the casting decisions and the amount of money and all that changed and what I did with it changed. And so it lost, I think, that original spark, that 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 realness to it. I think with the, the but I would love to hear it, to be honest. But then I would maybe completely be upset by what I'm hearing going, fuck, that's not what I remember. That's I mean, that would probably be my response. Was like, <laughs> that is not what I remember. Just like, you know, when you're a kid flying and, you know, playing, when you remember pe people, they like were the size of ants. But that's that, you know, when you grow up and you, you know, you become informed. So maybe that early stage of those things, it wasn't as great as I, I, I thought they were. Um, but it would be mm -hmm. fun to listen to some of that stuff. I don't even know how that you can get your hands on it. But um, Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it, it's lost. It, it hopefully isn't lost to time. Hopefully it's out there somewhere in the universe. But um, well, well, maybe not. Maybe not. It's just better to leave it alone. Don't go after it. Leave it alone. Go. <laughs> That's what I'm afraid of. I'm, I'm afraid of, yeah, go out and then go, oh, my God, this is a complete and utter crap. And I, that's that's the reason why I think it's having the I remember certain feel about it. I remember every, like Gutsy Fry. I remember these things on these specific projects because they're different and unique, um, right? And each one brought their differences to it. And what I was, you know, what, what what was we were doing with the script writing and everything else. Even though we yeah. didn't have meetings about it at all, it was just kind of organic and grew into something. It wasn't like there were specific instructions. In fact, in fact, I would get the scripts based on what I didn't even tell them we were doing new, you know, new new season. That I changed certain things that I wanted in it, and I'd just go ahead and do it while we were in the studio. But eventually, I would tell them. But I just didn't want, you know, sometimes when they're working quickly, changing things, uh, uh, it's just not the best idea. You know, they're good at what they do. Let's get this done. We'll figure out in the studio. Um, and that, that was the luxury of having like Simon around as well, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of figuring out what he thought was what, what he would come up with. You know, that right. was really in connection with the script writers, what they're writing. So, gotcha. yeah, but don't don't look for it. <laughs> Just trust me. Just trust me on everything I'm saying. I'm telling the truth. Hundred percent. No, I, there are faults in it. But the thing is, it's transcreation. So no, you, the names and everything there um, are not mispronounced or said you know three times in in that episode because we it's transgression we threw that stuff out didn't mess with any of the japanese names and places and all that stuff so didn't matter we we're making it kind of more of a, a localized humor we we're localizing the humor for india yeah i was going to ask you what is the difference between a trans creation and like your standard anime dub well, I, I think that, yeah, I mean, we were talking about earlier, like, what, what's up, Tiger Lily, Woody Allen did, yeah. I mean, where he just took a Japanese movie and, you know, just rewrote it, but kept the visuals and the same thing. We're keeping the visuals. There's not much editing with the visuals. There were just because there was a lot of – Japanese love people. There's always someone drinking, and there's always someone smoking, and there's always a little kid running around naked. 
So there's a lot of that being cut out, but that's just part of Japanese animation. That's I'm, I'm, it's a certain type of Japanese animation that was capturing kind of, you know, the, you know, if it was political, social tire of the 70s or 60s life and family life in Japan, whatever it may be. But I think there was a lot of that. And so they had to cut that stuff out. But generally, we kept the, we, the visuals were the same. Um, and we just wrote, we threw away the script and just made the whole thing up. I mean, wow. obviously, you're restrict. Yeah, I mean, it is cool. But time wise, I should have given a lot more time to people to be a lot more creative. But, you know, it was hard to do it because you were so limited in what we can say to begin with. Like risque comedy is easy. You know, I mean, you just, that stuff you can throw at and it works, but we couldn't do that. I've never been able to do that, but specifically for this market, we could not. And we are limited, like Alpine was about food, you know? So we are limited. We couldn't talk about meat, beef. I mean, we could talk about meat, but not beef specifically. Right, um, India. Because it's, it's, yeah. So there's just a lot of things. And, and, and then just because it's, it's more of a conservative environment, that, you know, I'm sure they were, if they were kissing or holding hands, we couldn't say kissing. You know, we just weren't able to say sometimes what the visuals were saying. So there were a lot of restrictions, but overall, I think that, 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 that helped with some of the creativity because that forced rather than just kind of playing the same card after one after another, we're forced to behave differently. But then that has its limitations as well because you can only do so much before you have to just go, okay, same card over and over again. Um, right. But you know, I, I wish it was different. I wish there was a lot more freedom, which would turn out a different product, but this is a kid's cartoon to begin with. So the idea of maybe bringing it to a broader audience you know, that's not their vision of it. Um, and that wasn't my job. So anyway, yeah, there was a lot of the trans creation is just making stuff up what you see in the visuals. <laughs> and there's no preparation on on the script, right? There's no communication from the script writer to, me, to the director or me. There's no, I don't communicate at all what I want, except for it after each season, I tended to change something. We went into giving give, just ridiculous. <laughs> Give, not even giving full account recipes of what you heard in the episode of some product. Um, like if it was like, you know, I don't know, whatever it was that I would give the recipe for it, but wasn't even in full. I didn't have enough time to get it in full. So we weren't giving full recipes. So hopefully no one was poisoned watching this <laughs> stuff because these recipes weren't in full. They, they weren't even accurate. So not only would it taste bad, they could li be life threatening. That was the danger of what I was working with, that I was putting out stuff that may actually poison people, but I didn't have enough time to get the thing in there, and I should have just said, let's not do it. But I didn't really think that people were going to really listen to that recipe anyway, because some of the stuff that we were leaving out was kind of like obvious, you know, that you go, okay, well, you need two eggs, don't you? You know, so it was just kind of things that we just bypassed in order to kind of fit things. This is always, you know, at the very end of Japanese cartoons where they're introducing the next cartoon. Mm. That's where we would put the stuff at because oh. we didn't have the ability to say this is what's coming up next on the next episode because I wasn't communicating with the script writer. The script writers are handing me the script that day sometimes. That morning for someone that was working with an episode, 10 episodes before someone else was working with someone in the morning. So I needed that script specifically for a 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock session. So – you know, we just, you know, there were things that we changed because, you know, we didn't know what was going to come up. I wasn't in, you know, none of the script writers knew what was going to come up until they got the visuals in hand and then watched it and figured out a story from there. They didn't have a translation to work with, an English translation from Japanese. They didn't have any reference on what was going on in the original, unless a lot of them did would check what the original was so they have an idea. I'm sure. So there were ways, but I wasn't giving this information to the script writer. Huh. It was point. The point was just be creative and make stuff up. But that's quite difficult when you're just like, there's a story there, obviously. That's what the visuals are for. Yeah. So it was just more about localizing the humor, I think was kind of a better way to, 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 to understand what we did. But we didn't understand that at first. Okay. If, if someone just localized the humor, it would have been different than what we did. My my feeling was uh, the further out there in some ways, it just you know was funny. 
Right. So anyway, that's a transcreation kind of is. I, I, I mean, that's what we did with it um, right. for Pogo, Cartoon Network Pogo Channel. Yeah. And why were those shows transcreations not regular dubs? Don't know. But I okay. would think it's for legality reasons. I can't, I don't I don't know the real I you know you would ha, you would have to I mean you know you stuff that you do you do a lot of investigative stuff so that's something you can figure out and let me know because the legality of it I, you know you would have to talk to the actual creators of it you know the, the original writers you'd have it, who knows how many people would actually have to go through or if it's through distribution maybe it was it was a very specific thing that it's not it was only for a very specific time frame that it's never going to get that replay because that's it, it it didn't have the license for it it was right. one of those things you know maybe cartoon was playing around with and they said we just want a few different product but again I think they chose. I, I don't know what their choice was and what they could show, but I think a lot of the stuff was so adult that I, I, you go, okay, it's for adults. You, it, it's uh, well, it's obviously a Japanese cartoon that is for kids, but it has that triple layer effect to it, where it's hitting everything. Where you couldn't do that with the India market. That's not what they wanted it for. I'm like, sometimes I just felt like they're just reading. There was there was the the synopses were being read, and they didn't have time to go through the visuals. Just the same thing with everything else. Is you know you don't you don't have time. So I think when you look at the visuals, and only when they had you know when we did the episodes, they're kind of forced to go and look at the visuals all the way through for their quality control and go, oh shit, we can't use this because it, how are we going to cut this out? It affects the story. So there was a lot of those cases that I didn't know what they're cutting out. And so we were just riding for what we saw, even though the possibility is that it's being going to cut out and they're going to have to do the editing with the script. And there wasn't a lot of going back after the fact and redoing lines. It was only if we missed a few things and then the, our, the, the you know, discussion of, OK, you can't actually say that. You can't say darn because it sounds too much like damn. Right. Um, you know, so things like that, that that's what I because of that, I changed everything I did in the future. To, to, to make things I was I wouldn't even say I would never ever say God in an episode yeah ever but I hear it all the time American stuff like oh god no I, I couldn't do it well if I could do it the thing is that maybe some clients were willing to go that far but because I went the whole thing with that I was like nope never touching it because there was a lot of things I'd have to bring back people for and sometimes I was paying you know, so I'm like, right. I'm never doing it again. I'm not saying God in any episode. God does not have to be in my episodes because I'm not paying for it. <laughs> I'm not paying for my religion. Not my <laughs> film. Okay, wow. No, I'm, I'm very happy you remember so much. Now, you mentioned um, some character names were changed. Oh, yeah, all of them were. Well, generally, most of them were, and we did have a character list and all that. But I don't know. It's gone now, and I think... By the end, I stayed away from names because I just did not want to have to go back and that wasn't the right name. And I wasn't keeping a, a, a real track of it because there's – if Aunt by Man has millions of people entering the uh, episodes. Yeah. I have pictures. I had pictures of them all. And they were giving names. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. Because there's transgression. I'm like, right. fine if you want to do it for the real thing. But I'm not doing it for transgression. I'm not putting it – not doing it. So the easiest was just avoid the name. You know, if it was a recurring character, yeah, we'd say the name one time at the beginning of the episode. But I didn't have to. I wasn't going Breadman or something. Well, yeah, I did actually. When it was, you know, it was if it was a kind of a big character that you knew was coming back. Obviously, I did. But other characters, I briefly said it, and it wasn't said again the episode, so it wasn't a big deal. But we okay. did have a character list. That, that's one thing we did have that the client followed through with um, was the character list. Because, again, we couldn't say certain things. We had Curry Man. I don't know if the original ja – I think the jury, original Japanese had Curry Man. Yeah, Curry Pond. So yeah, Curry Pond. Yeah, it wasn't like an insult. It wasn't you know, like Curry Face, you know, what you yeah. heard in The Simpsons. You know, right. So it wasn't like we were like leaning into stuff. In fact, we didn't lean into anything like that. At all. And we had the ability with scriptwriters to lean into a lot of stuff. But we just didn't. 
In fact, they they first started to, and and, and I said, no, we can't, <laughs> I, because all I'm doing is going I, because I have to change it on the spot, and I don't know what to change. I'm not a script writer. <laughs> I'm terrible at script writing. So I was like, change it, even though it's funny as hell. It's making everybody laugh, and we'd probably sit there and laugh for half an hour rather than doing work. But the client will not accept it. We can't lean into anything like that, even though it's localizing the humor, but it's not localizing it for that market. So right. it'd be localizing the humor for what I thought was funny. <laughs> That's what all it would be, really. So we couldn't lean into anything. Although some of the writing that Simon did, he did, he played around with words that it was, and, and also the script writers did too, that you played around with stuff that you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's a clever way of saying that I'm being rude. But it, it didn't come, you know, it was just a very witty way of writing. Okay. Yeah. So worth noting about uh, Meanie Man, I was just checking through my notes. Um, there were other projects that used the name Meanie Man. So I'm wondering if you just got that name. Oh, God. I, I, I don't, you know, it was probably half the writers and half the client. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't think, I think... I don't remember actually. I think the clients usually tended to give us – they gave us the, a list and we could play off it or we just follow the list. In yeah. fact, no. It was generally – with Cartoon Network, no. They gave us that list and said this is the, this is the cast list. This is the character list. Um, but at one time with On Pine, we did try to – but yeah, it, it, we did try to change the names, but we had the, char- we had the cl- cast list. No. So definitely Cartoon Network had – in Pogo, they created the, the, the character list. Sorry. Gotcha. To, to go about five minutes before all this rambling off. No, that's fine. Yeah, it, it was definitely created by them. Sorry. No, that's that's totally For fine. specifically on Pond Man, it was, because there were so many different character, oh, characters. God. Kaibutsu Kun, no, it was different, because there were so many different characters. But at that point, Kaibutsu Kun, no one, they didn't even do any checking on any of that. They didn't care, really. It, it, it's just they didn't care. They not no one was there checking on um, whether the name was used or it wasn't because we would you know we change it, we localized it, we westernized some of the names. Um, gotcha. A lot. Well, in fact, all the names um, for specific for like a kaibutsu kun. I remember that, that someone asked me to do uh, follow the original. I was like, oh god, I can't. You know, <laughs> I can't go back. That was the interesting in my mind. I was like, I could, it, that would almost be hell because then I would actually know what was said and I wouldn't know what to do with that. <laughs> you know, I, I, I would be angry at myself going, shit. Or what we even did with the voices, how we changed the, the voices up. Um, but I, yeah, going back and, and doing it again, because I did like 100 episodes of Kabutsukan. Really? Um, yeah. We did, we did a lot of that. Was a, that was what that contract was pretty big. Because we were doing a lot of stuff. On Pen Men did over a hundred episodes. Maybe Kabutsu Gun wasn't quite a hundred, but it was it was in the seventies. Wow! Um, like ha- ha- Hagamara, which we renamed was Hagelman's, but it was originally called. Um, and we went back to the, the Japanese name Hagamaru. Um, I think we did like twenty six episodes, and some things we only you know did limited thing you know limited because um, it was only one season. And other ones, we just, I guess, if it did well. I don't even know if that was it. Maybe there was just more of them, the original. I don't even know what the Hal Gomez. not too sure. I never followed that series. I, I, I rarely followed any of the series to begin with, to be honest. I didn't know any of it. It, it was just like, okay. Okay. We just did it. Okay, I see it. Surupika Hagemaru. Okay. Yeah. It, it, and actually, it was the first time I worked with Sarah. Um, and, and it was it was interesting, and then also the scriptwriter Mike Quinn, um, because it the way he wrote for Omni, because he was a scriptwriter for Omni, was much different than how I delivered stuff. It was much slower, um, because obviously they were told to slow down, you know, because their main market was Asia, um, huh. and also for you know for markets, and so they were told in their delivery to slow down. And I didn't. Mine's too rushed, though. I look back on it, God, Alan, it shouldn't have been that rushed. You know, it was that happy medium. <coughs> you know, that Goldilocks thing. You got to find that perfect. <laughs> yeah. Even though Goldilocks is a weird story to begin with. They never really talk about someone breaking in a home. You know, they just kind of bypass that whole thing. Oh, sure. Yeah, she broke into a home. 
She was stealing their food. She would have probably killed them if she had a gun. But I, I, with the with the you know with the Goldilocks thing is we just never it we never found that happy medium. I think that that theirs was a little bit too slow. Um, but it, no, I'm going to not say too slow. I'm just going to say it was a little bit slower than what I did, and mine maybe was a little bit too fast. So there was that happy ground that I didn't I didn't find that I just was a little bit too fast. So that was the first that Michael Quinn had written for himself when he was dubbing as well. Um, so it was interesting to hear that from his own because he wrote the whole series. I think he wrote the whole series. Wow! Um, and that was that was a luxury that I, I that rarely happened that one person was actually able to write the whole series. Like even when stuff that would had, you know, specific like the Japanese stuff, other than the stuff that was going for cartoon Poco channel that we actually had specifically, we had to follow exactly what the original was doing. I would still have three to five script writers on it. Right. You know, so each person was just, even then their translation would have five people translating as well. It depends on how quick we had to get this through and how much money they had. So a lot of mistakes were being made at a translation level. So because there were five of them, they, they weren't communicating either. There, it was pushing that stuff out to get deadlines. So there wasn't any of anything that goes on in, 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 you know, in the U.S. where there's, there's a quality control. There was a quality control for what they did, but it, it was at the end of the process. There wasn't it just kind of breaking it up and going, okay, let's get this right you know, the wording of it, because we didn't have time. The budgets weren't there. It was, you know, you get it out quickly for air. Um, or just because the studio had so much product going through that they have to schedule the stuff well in advance. So right. they only allocate a certain amount of time to mix and do everything else. So anything over that, it's like they're screwed because it's a snowball effect. There are, you know, runs along on other product as well. So. Um, wow. Well, I, again. Yeah. So it, it, there was a difference between each season, like for Pogo stuff to what I would normally do on the on the cat on the cast list and e everything else with the mixing and everything else. You know, the amount of time the studio would spend would be different according huh. to what they could spend on doing their final mix. Like, you know, with your with what I read, saw with Full Metal Alchemist, what they did with that bowl. You know, yeah. no, ours was ours was an M and E effect. I have no, and I didn't. You know, I wasn't. I wasn't. No one asked me anything. <laughs> you know, I wasn't. It was just that's what they did. Um, I didn't have any kind of say in it at all. And I, nor would I want that. You know, I think that's. I don't need to. That's not my decision. Right. I, mean, I don't get. I don't. You know. I don't know. You know. Obviously, they, the bull thing is awesome. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, yeah. but that, that that's a luxury of, I guess, you know, r really putting the effort and time into something. Yeah, and having uh, involvement right, from the Japanese team. The region. Yeah. Oh, God. That, I mean, that would have been amazing. I, I, that is in itself. I mean, those are the guys that you, that you can spend hours, you know, just talking to. Yeah. Because that, I mean, their experience on that would just be. Because that's I mean what they're really dealing with was, was the whole Japanese dubbing, you right. know that is in it, everything. It's amazing. It's just you know what they do. I mean, you know, with the Hong Kong thing, it's not connected to anything else. You know, I I, I had to follow basically what Cantonese were doing in terms of the level of projection okay. and delivery because that was what they found acceptable, especially in the movie side. But no, I mean, I the idea that these guys worked with, you know, the, on the Japanese side, they're they're getting the kind of the whole, the history of what they do, and their, I mean, their whole philosophy, on the whole thing, and that must have been an amazing experience yeah. for those guys. Yeah, I also know it can be a little frustrating, <laughs> even when you have oh, to work because yeah, they 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 can be really picky depending on who you're working with. I I, mean, I know that. Yeah, I yeah. know, I, I, and that's I. And I mean, as someone who I fuck it up all the time, especially in the record, God damn it, NG, do it again. And I'll, I'll mess that name up a hundred million times. And e even the talent do too. Like, uh, Kabutsukun, Hagamaru, Gutsy Frog, Anpan Man. Yeah. Um, see, that was the other thing with Ant. Should we say Anpan Man? Anpan, Anpan Man? And I think there was a discussion saying Anpan Man. And I just felt that was harder to say. 
Yeah. So I said, no, let's say on pun man. I just feel like that's easier to say. Right. It comes out. But, but like someone like Lily had at first, not for very long, had a more difficult time because on is more kind of what the English say in Hong Kong, mm. you know, like on, on dance. Uh. So rather than nasally a on everything, which Lily came into, you know, this is the first time she was, you know, kind of outside the, you know, Florida, the U S and in not hearing accents. And in, in coming to you know Hong Kong and hearing a totally different you know the English and then what's the Hong Kong English? I'm not talking about the local Hong Kong. I'm just talking about you know Guaylo white people that you know the expats that have you know grew up here as kids that you know that were maybe even born here. They have a Hong Kong accent. It's not English and it's not American. It's a Hong Kong uniquely huh. accented voice. So hearing that and then on, so it's a little bit more difficult for I think for some people to to say than people like Catherine and Muriel who were born here, um, yeah. you know, and had that kind of feel. And then Simon as well. And Candice, who I already told you, she's Scottish. So yeah, that doesn't make a big bit of difference in the on, but I think it's more familiar with her. So yeah, I don't know what the Americans would say. How do you guys say it? Uh, the Because they were so... It they were so involved with the Japanese client, they went with the Japanese pronunciation on Panman. So on Panman, yeah, yes. kind of what I did. Yeah. Yeah. So okay yeah so that that's ultimately what they went with and i know tms was very very involved with it um to a point not not to toe levels but they did they wanted this to sound good and be received well with americans and hopefully they do more so far there's no news but hopefully hopefully they do uh the tv show or something but because i I know they loved work they loved working on it they this was Gia's. Uh, you saw the video. That was her first big voiceover gig. Yeah. And she, yeah. So and she did and she did it and she did it. That yeah, voice for Candice did our on pun man. Yeah. Um, and so if you heard if you heard that you no, know, so you've never heard anything. There's that one commercial, and that's it for your version. Oh, for Cartoon Network. Yeah, for the Pogo oh. Pogo Cartoon Network. Yeah, that right. that's okay. it. Just a commercial. Yeah, I mean, I I can't honestly give you anything. I mean, there's, there's just I just not I'm not allowed to do the the, the the scripts are not mine. I you know anything that's not mine, um, and I I just wouldn't be able to give you anything. And we changed so much in the scripts anyway that nothing I had sent you was probably what we originally did. And I didn't go back and change them. But see, later on, I started to have to do that. You know, so in the recording, the slowing the process down. Okay, would you say? Because sometimes you know, the dubbers are changing lines as they go while they're recording. So again, our whole process is much different. It's dubbing on the run. Yeah, you know, we're a page at a time of dialogue. No, you know, no, no, no NGs, just all the way through. Huh. Um, yeah, it's just much different. So the scripts are written for a dubber. They're not written for, um, you know, it's for the lip sync and to follow what the original is doing. Um, but they'll go. We'll go through. Maybe someone can do a whole scene. Maybe two people will do a whole scene together. Um, right. And then we'll just move on. No rehearsals. I mean, you might go into – well, you definitely – you go into the first episode. You might have a look at the first scene just to kind of go, okay, this is how they sound and all that. But then after you kind of pick that up, you know, there's no there's no rehearsing at all. Um, so you, you're just following what the script says. So if the script sucks, it t- you know, the dubbers get – they get frustrated. And then I have to listen to it. Then I have to yell at the script writers. But I'm not a script writer myself, so I'm like, it's hard to you know to go to yell at someone and get after them when I have you know I don't know. I it's timing. It's you know, if you're not picking it up, I don't know where to help you. If you're not if you're not you know recording it yourself, I don't know how because you're speaking the lines. You know, as a yeah. script writer, you're speaking those lines when, to get the sync. So if that character is saying something fast, well then you got to deliver it fast as well. So, and be able to make it clear enough. So anyway, um, you know, the, all that stuff that we didn't rehearse, you know, even with the on pan men, which she did, you know, was probably just the experience is, you know, hundred percent different, you know, it's professional. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with my candy, my candies, my on pan and candies. No, it wasn't even at the level. So we didn't even work on the voice. She pulled a voice that she had, you know, she had on the shelf. We okay. didn't create the voice. You know, I'm yeah. saying that she, she has like four or five voices for kids, not just one of them. So, and it was, you know, and if that was the one that the client picked 
for the you know for that character. At this point, we got on a tangent about different dubbing locales in the English speaking world, such as Miami, Los Angeles, and Vancouver. And then Jack mentioned this person that was surprisingly involved in Hong Kong dubbing. Right. So yeah, because I, I worked with I worked with one of the girls that was original. I, I don't know if she was. I don't know if she was original or not. On My Little Pony, named name Maggie Blue. Maggie um, Blue. Hold on. Um, I'm gonna look that up. Yeah, she's in Canada now. She was in Hong Kong. Worked, with, brought her on a, in a few things. She was v- extremely talented, extremely talented, um, awesome. I mean, she was. She had the best oh. boy voice, you know, boy voice, everything. She just and I did a few. You got her on for a few projects, but then that's so um, cool. Then she, you know, she had different things, but yeah, she wasn't. She had done it for so long as a kid that. She was not, it was so different what she did. So she wasn't a dubber. But see, this is at the very beginning when I had Catherine Muriel on huh. and Maggie was the third female. And so we were doing a lot of Chinese product, but Maggie couldn't really dub. Yeah, Mag- Maggie Blue O'Hara. Yeah, Maggie Blue O'Hara. Yeah. Okay. So, wow. we, so we, she wasn't, she didn't know how to, because the dubbing was different. You know, what she did in Canada was closer to what they did in the U.S. So it wasn't dubbing Hong Kong dubbing. Right. And so, but the girls, Catherine and Muriel, kind of, that's where they learned. They huh. didn't learn anything from me. They learned it all from Maggie. But no Maggie kidding. wasn't a dubber. No, that's the truth. So Maggie was not a dubber, though. So it was, Catherine was the one that was able to quickly pick up dubbing the quickest. Huh. Muriel was able to capture it, it. It was odd because they both captured different aspects and not and improved certain things that Maggie didn't do. And Muriel was able to be diverse like Maggie was because Matt, the first series reason why we got that because we were still competing for me to get the, the, the gig at SDI. I am still completing competing with Omni. And so what I had to do was these first episodes, it was called. Um, oh, I forgot the name. It was Chinese. Big, huge cartoon. Um, and she she did everything. So but we got it because of her. Huh. Wow. And be- only because of her. And that's where Michael Pizzuto kind of go- – now I'll bring him in. Um, I, he came in, but he was still working for me. But he came in for like one episode of this. Um, and, then, and then he left. But it, with, it was all new people, but it was mainly females. And I had another guy on there too. Um, Neil Art, um, Neil that Art. I it, quickly a lot of people kind of you know were cut out because the, the script writers with the script writing some of them scheduling some of them left the country, but yeah when we first started Maggie was such an instrumental part for the females the guys not so much because they separated us, um, but Maggie was so instrumental in in Catherine and Muriel. That's then when so Lily wild. came on, then the same thing happened. They were able to do the same thing, pass on what they got from Maggie. It was nothing that I did. I wasn't a dubber myself, and I couldn't instruct people. Um, and so it was so fortunate that Maggie was so good. And she was she went good dubber. She was just very talented and good with Catherine and Muriel. They were friends. They, I mean, they were close friends. And so that's how it all worked out. Was Maggie was the, so instrumental. Now there would have been another girl named Jessica Kaplan that would have done the same thing, but she opted. She was because she had done Maggie and Jessica were dubbing a lot for me on for another studio, doing some other stuff. And so there was a group of those girls that split up. So there's so many groups that you kind of go through until I got to SDI where that group stuck. Um, but but with that group at SDI, the females. The two main females at the beginning, Maggie is responsible for everything um, yeah. and, the, and, and, and what they became, you know, and mine was only about kind of, you know, fine tuning some aspects that I felt need to be fine tuned. But that's my opinion. They may, you know, doing a fucking European accent voice does not go down very well. So <laughs> I would that's my fine tuning. So I'll probably never do that fine tuning again or putting a German voice. The guy was blonde. Yeah. Why not put a German voice on? <laughs> yeah. You know, Michael Zook had to do like 30 voices. And so I knew he's going to, ha- you know, I knew there was going to be a point where let's start off with something that's different. And yeah. So those are the, th- yeah. So Maggie Blue, got to give a shout out for that because she was very instrumental. And those, th- those, they, they, they would pinpoint that 
exact time with Nagy, the formation, the, how they were. Awesome. Th- it was because of her. And they passed it on, which is awesome as well. You know, they didn't hold it in. They, wherever their opportunities were, like, like other people like Candice and everybody that came from Omni, they had already been formed. So this is something that they were formed. I was the part of that forming process, but, but because of the time that we spent in the studio, but Maggie's 100% responsible for that. That is um, so cool. Because, so yeah, I'm looking yeah. at her resume. She was, going yes. back to Dragon Ball, she was in the original Canadian dub yes. of Dragon Ball. She was a uh, character named Bulma. And I see wow. she's in Car Captor Sakura. Like, this is all before she moved to Hong, uh, Hong Kong, of course. Hong Kong. Yeah, yes, she was I in... didn't know any of this. You're telling me for the first time. I only knew she was in My Little Pony. That's all I knew yeah, that she was. Yeah, I see, so I I she see her fit. here. And she would later go on to be in the newer My Little Pony as well. Um, After she moved back. So, yeah. Yeah, Ron so, yeah, she, when she, yeah she, when she left Hong Kong, she's awesome. She's extremely talented. So talented. Yeah. And I was so fortunate for these girls to, to work with her. It, it was just, it was... It was perfect timing, you know, and it wasn't even things that I thought was going to happen with it. But and she stuck on there for, you know, I, 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 I abused the situation. I probably sh- should have single tracked her earlier and just had her come in for her own stuff. But I knew what she was doing. I knew the effect that she was having on those girls that That's you know good. they needed that. I wasn't capable of giving that to them. So, yeah, she's awesome. So, That's I mean, amazing. she is so extremely talented. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, being able yes. to get a lead role in Dragon Ball is really something. Yeah, I mean, she could do she could do so many different characters and voices. Just extreme, and she could act as well. I mean, she was just way above any level that I could have ever reached. But Mira would be the person that could reach that level. But e- even then, it was you know, it Mira was different. She wasn't like you know, she just had that. She could do that boy voice. Yeah, she, she really could. Incredible. Yeah, I mean, just just an awesome boy voice. And I did a lot of crap product with her. And she still always gave, like, one of them, good, what well, was called Kung Fu, French. Um, she played a minor role, in, not a minor one, she was one of the leads. Um, but it was more of, like, teenage kid stuff. But that was later on. But she was responsible, 100% responsible for the development of Muriel and Catherine. In the time that they shared, they, I know that they were just good friends. So it was it was good to see that as well. And I think that that was something that's kind of, you know, rather than what I did was break everybody up, you know, so you lost that contact with people. And, I, and, and going back and seeing that, part of what you're getting is that people perform better when they're with you know the people they're they're in the show with yeah because it's almost like they're trying to raise each other's love on a way or they respect so each other so much that they're going to get the best out of them because they respect the other performer but because i single tracked it and moved in that direction they lost a lot of that that feel which was captured with muriel catherine and and uh maggie so anyway yeah she's awesome extremely talented yeah, I'm looking at kind of her LinkedIn right now. She's um yeah, self-employed, amazing at everything. <laughs> so what it says right now. She's well, well, in- I mean she is, she's gifted. I mean on many different th- levels. I mean spiritually all that she is gifted. Yeah. I'm and then you take a look. But- <clears throat> yeah, so I don't, I, I don't talk to her or anything like that anymore because I don't do social media, but That's that's fine. I do. Um, had a question. So you said she wasn't in any of your dubs or she just taught people or. Oh, no, she was in the dubs. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. She did. What? everything. That was the only reason why we got these. The, when I first got this contract was basically her. Yeah. The Chinese it was thing. based on one. It was. Yeah. It, I think it's called a cat's eye or cat's eye or something like cat's that. Eye. Um, and, 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 and so she's basically responsible for the. I don't know what's called the cat's eye. I forgot. Um, I'll, I'll look it up later. Yeah. And so, but it will, but she, Maggie will never put that on her stuff, but she's basically responsible. She did almost every character wow. to get that for us to get that because it was, she was able to pull that off that she was. So, and, and I knew that Catherine w- was very quick. 
she picked it up right away because she could she understood um chinese so mm. she wrote the script and also she's hearing chinese in her ear <laughs> so she was able to pick up the lip sync and dubbing of it quickly wow. um Maybe it's called the I for, yeah I forgot what it's but it is it's yeah so we got that I mean that's the only reason why I got the gig to do that was <laughs> right off the bat they even said they even the, the, what Omni people said because a lot of Omni people came over and started working with me mm -hmm. they even said that the client had said this is they've done a better job than you we're giving it to we're awarding it to them and it was only because of Maggie. i mean obviously miriam and Catherine had a huge part with it but it was only because of maggie doing all these characters as well like i was able to stick to Catherine just doing just the main girl voice you know which she nailed yeah uh, and then mira was doing the she would do a boy and a girl voice and okay. so everything else was was, was maggie but then, then what happened was Maggie left and Lily came in and did it as well. So the whole thing kind of repeated itself. Um, but but Lily's much different, you know, in the levels of all these other girls. Um, right. Yeah. So yeah, Maggie Maggie got that job. She kept. She was. She got that for me. She'd probably say, "Fucker didn't pay me enough. She got paid a lot more if I knew that I was getting him this contract." But it was. <laughs> it was because she pulled it off. That's amazing. Because she did everything. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then good on the girls to kind of pick up and learn. They were so they were so willing to learn. They just respected. They idolized Maggie, I think, in a way. <laughs> you know, they looked they you know, she was just like, "Oh, oh my gosh, because she did all this stuff." To the, I had no idea until you just said it now. I'm putting it all together going, "Oh shit, that is the relationship." I knew it was close, but I didn't really realize that that those girls checked out what she had done. And so if she had done all this other stuff in Canada, like Dragon Ball. Th yeah. Those girls must have been going, "Holy shit, she's awesome!" <laughs> so yeah, that they looked up to her with you know bright eyes and all that. So yeah, it was it was cool to see. Yeah, and um, was she in any other like the dubs we were talking about, like on Panmon or what have you? No, no, she pretty much. I worked with her before I start basically doing SDI. She only did a few. She did one other Japanese product. And I forgot it was only 13 episodes. And it's such an odd cartoon. Um, it, it must have gone on Netflix. Um, I mean, not Netflix, um, uh, an, anime. Um, Animax? What is it called? Yeah, Animax. Um, <coughs> it was 13 episodes. Just a strange cartoon. I can't even remember what it was, the name of it. Do you, um, do you remember anything about it? Um, she played, yeah, not really. Hold on. You know what? If if I'll look, if, if I should have the file, oh. but maybe I don't because it came in. It, <clears throat> I had a corruption of my computer and I uh, forgot Ooh. what year it was. It's 2017. And so everything, all that shit, I lost a lot of stuff. Oh, no. So I don't know if I still have it. Yeah, I've lost. But I, you know what? I've never really kept It's Again, I shouldn't. It's not my possession. You know, it just because, you know, it, it was my job to do it. It really isn't mine. You know, it's like that's their it's you know, it's it's their product, it's their script, really. So anyway, I lost some of it. So I'll check. I just forgot the name of it. But it's it's like 13 episodes. That was the only oh. She did the very first thing we did. Shit. That was 26 episodes. Um, yeah, so she did two Japanese product at sdi for me then it was all other stuff i had done before one was called a french cartoon that was called uh kung foot k-u-n-g and then foot f-o-o-t okay um, and so oh, also to go back to the, the pogo stuff we did we did write the opening song too which was in english we did the translation of fraud pun man um it took, yeah oh wow Okay. Yeah, but, but we had the original act. I think we had like all of them, like Candice, Muriel, do their own voices in it. And oh, sing wow. it. I, think, I think yeah. Some so same thing with Kung Fu. We did it, but I don't know if they used it. But that was with a different cast. That was Jessica Kaplan and Maggie Blue, um, and I, that were the two female. Catherine Ryan might have been in it. I used the Scott Sauer. There's a lot of people I used that that before I started SDI, I was just doing for like studio like Nexon. Um, so we did a lot of French stuff, but it wasn't through Nexon we did the French thing. It was through Simon had a contact that was French and she was 
doing representing these this French um, a- animation company. So we did a, a few French cartoons as well. Um, and yeah, so Lulu was another fr- was a French cartoon we did for SDI, um, but she wasn't Maggie wasn't on that either. So Maggie had only did two, and I can't remember the exact names of them. And the, one of them is not very g- good on my part as well. Well, no, no, a lot of them aren't very good. Um, but there's a lot of mistakes, even more than what you probably hear what I would consider to be good. There's still tons of mistakes. Um, this early stuff, I'll have to get back to you what she did. Um, but okay. other than that, it was, all, it was all like the French stuff that I would do. Um, it was, one was called Comfort. I don't even know if she would actually take credit for that either. Because we didn't even know what was, you know, she did sing the closing song as well. Because Maggie could sing very well. And the other girl in it, Jessica Kaplan, they sang it as well. But I think the guy that I had seen the opening, he did, they wanted it to sound more rap. And so I think they replaced it and they, you know, they put a French rapper on it, um, which sound much better. But so that was the introduction of doing the actual song as well. I I didn't produce it or do anything. I would just pass it on to a guy that would do it. Um, and he was a singer, but you know, he, he sang a certain way. And Scott Evans did one as well. Oh. He did Kai, Kai Butsu Kun. And he sounds, I, that's all I say. The way he did it sounds very like, um, oh, like a uh, war pig, um, uh, Osborne. Um, um, he sounds like him, the early stuff from black Sabbath. Oh, um, you know, and sound, it, it has, but it's, you know, has a horror kind of tone to it, the opening song. You know, so we'd still keep the same music and effect track. We would just re- rewrite the song to match the original. That's where we kind of somewhat kept within the translation because you have a tone to match and follow. So you have to fit words. And they would often f- follow with what the story was, you know, okay. of the original. Right. Because so, yeah, we'd, we would do the songs too. But I had nothing to do with creativity wise. I just passed it on to an outside source. And so if, know, I, if I'm not, um, so just so I've got, got the picture clear. Um, you said Scott Evans did the. It was it the opening for Kai Butsukun? Yeah, he did the opening and closing oh. song. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he did it. Well, you know, he would do it. I think we. He just did it at home. No, no, no. no you know what? Holy shit! Did we change that? You know what? You know, never mind. He did. He did a. Uh, maybe I did. Had some, maybe someone else did it. He did an audition for it, and I have that, and that's why I love listening. I don't know if he actually, yeah, I think he did. I think he did both versions, the opening and closing. Um, another guy named, uh, I forgot his name, but he did a bunch of opening and closings as well. And, and almost always we included the cast members. So like Lily, Muriel, and Catherine, and maybe sometimes hear their voice as well. Um, but again, or Candice as well. Yes. But again, none of them are really, but Maggie did it as well for Kung Fu. So that and so, but she, Maggie would be the only one that you could say would be close to being professional, except for Jessica Kaplan as well. Um, and she did Kung Fu. Jessica Kaplan did not translate into SDI. She did. She did something different. Gotcha. Uh, and Maggie did. Maggie did something as well. So Maggie was not really one. We did another thing for another animation company that um, was the guy was an architect really. Um, that we did the. Uh, a few cartoons for and Maggie did those as well. So Maggie really didn't want to do it. She just, she just, she didn't. She's like, I'm tired of doing this. You know, I've done this my entire life. This is not what I've come to Hong Kong to do. She just said, I'm doing this for you, Jack. Oh. So she was very, huh. she was very nice to do that. She just was not interested. You know, she okay. was, her career, her career trajectory was just going someplace else. Gotcha. You know, she was kind of feeling out what she wanted to do. And, um, you know, she wanted to experiment in different things. And so rightfully so. She'd been doing this since her childhood. She'd know. So she just did it because I asked her to. Um, and, you know, and in the end, like I said, it, it just it just worked. She tra- she j- made that jump from the previous ones at a different studio to making this specific jump to SDI to do this this series, you know, and two Japanese things as well to help out, you know, give Miriam and Catherine that, that 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 extra guidance, you know, the only direction really. So okay. yeah, she's awesome. To go back to her again, <laughs> yes, to sing. Yes, she did that as well. She would sing, we would have original That's people amazing. sing it. Yeah, this so is Scott all yeah. this is all stuff that I've I it's brand new to me. <laughs> 
but, but, but that's not for like the Animax stuff. The singing stuff purely was only right. for on Cartoon Network Pogo Channel. Right. And then yeah. one, one off that I had done previous to that French cartoon. And I think I did two French cartoons that we did the opening singing to. Um, yeah. But nobody I, would call yeah. up the singing. Animax, I know, would just put on the Japanese opening. Yeah, exactly. And, we, and no, we, nor should we ever try to replace that stuff. Yeah. You know, there's no reason. I mean, this stuff was purely because it was a, like it was a French cartoon. So just it looked French. It looked didn't look American. But I mean, it's translatable. I mean, just it's not like a Jap. You know, Japanese animation when you come across Japanese animation, it's not right. you know a, a secret. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I think to replace those kind of songs would be uh, they could do it here. Maybe in L.A. they will do it. Or do you think the do, did they do it with Full Metal Alchemist? No, they, they actually it? didn't. Um, it, it's just really hard to because one, you have to devote the resources to translate the music, but it's also getting the rights to do it. So a lot of times they'll just play the Japanese opening. Jack and I went on a tangent from here that led to us talking about Kaon, a dub which he directed in Hong Kong. Here's our discussion about Kaon. There was not many dudes. I, I yeah. was the only dude in Kaon. I was the only male in Kaon. I don't think oh, I brought any I other thought, males. I thought I, heard, I thought I picked up Russell Waite somewhere in there. Nope. Ah, Russell was, was not in. No, I, was I, was, I wasn't working with Russell at that time. Ah, I, thought, I thought there was a male that was voiced by Russell. I was mistaken. I did say that in the video because it, it did sound like him, but it was like a one line. I'm just like... Uh, yeah, okay. I, it was everything. Whatever there was, I did it. Gotcha. <laughs> Tony was the same way. Tony, Tony said, just like he was Yui's dad. He was the principal. Like every, almost every male voice was him in that show. You know what? Oh, okay, maybe, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm. I don't. I just don't imagine bringing anybody in. Maybe yeah. I did have someone do something here or there when they were doing something else. Yeah, that could have been it. Maybe. So I stand corrected. I, I, I don't. I don't actually know, but I, I don't remember hiring. Okay. I don't. I thought. I, I don't. Yeah. I Russell could have been in there, and they're like he could have been doing something else. I said, "Oh, could you do this line?" You right. know, and I probably didn't pay him the full rate for it. You know, probably negotiated out <laughs> after the fact. Oh, by the way, could we not pay the full rate? No, I yes, no. Russell was very accommodating. He was one of those. Russell was yeah. one of those guys that wanted to do every character. You know, he just he wanted to do it all, and he yeah. was very well informed about Japanese cartoons. So Wonderful. he's probably the, like he's like with the guys that you speak to. Yeah. You know, that they know their shit that, you know, they, they, they've, they've, they studied it. They, they, they're fans of it. They really do appreciate it. And that's the way Russell is. As that's well. awesome. He's very much. Yeah. yeah. Whereas me, not, not the, quite the same, not at all. <laughs> not, not even close to it. Yeah. But I, but, but, but I, yeah. So just, it's different strokes for different folks, but I do love like, you know, I appreciate everything that I, I worked on. I mean, the bridge of creators were, you know, I mean, that stuff's amazing. And the talent that I was able to work with well, as well. Yeah. So, again, self-respect, self-introspecting. I'm not quite yeah. appreciate. I, I, I know I should be so appreciative. And why, didn't, why wasn't I appreciative then? And that's where I'm kind of still going through. Anyway, enough. <laughs> what's it saying? Enough about me. So what do you think of me? <laughs> oh, I think you're. I think you've been a lot. I think you've been very informative. I think you're very, um, very fun to, to honestly, very fun to talk to for so far. Just like all of your insights and all that, and getting to hear you chit chat, and it's been, you know, very informative. But um, good, good. Yeah. yeah, just be careful. Just be careful because nothing, nothing I say is meant to to to, to really be an insult or harm to anybody. No, I get you. you. Know? At this point, we got sidetracked, and at some point, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood came up. While I had that train of thought, I asked Jack if he remembered anything else about Full Metal other than what he and I previously spoke about over messages. Here's his reply. But yeah, so did you, just while we're talking about Full Metal, did you remember anything else from Full Metal, like characters or moments or anything no, I, I, I don't. I, I, you know, I only got it from like when I watched some of your video before I got distracted. Um, that kind of Lily had said that that was a, a very, you know, it was a hard role for her in Japan. No, maybe, yeah, I think that she said that that was a hard role for her in Japanese. Like, 
it, like it, it, emotional. It's an emotional. Yeah, role. emotional. Yeah, yeah. And I and I think that that again, see, because it was just those two. And I don't. The thing is, I don't remember whether I originally tried to bring them in together, but because we had to put an effect on Lily that oh, we would have right. to double. We would have to double track anyway. And yeah. so what ended up being, I don't know if, I don't know if I scheduled Muriel first or not. So she had something to play off. Of. She does say that she played off and she gives Muriel credit for that. But I'm not too sure that she played off that much because, again, I don't know. I don't remember what I had to do. When, at mm -hmm. what time of the year it was. Was Muriel leaving? You know, did she, was she leaving for the summer? Did I need to get, you know, 15 episodes ahead? So there are things like that, but I know if I I'd single track them at some point because there, there was no point. We had to double track every scene when they were together. So it's like, well, that's not fair and Muriel and how much I'm paying. Even though they would love to do it that way, I probably felt more comfortable separating and single right. tracking people. Right. Um, but that that's that they broke up that connection. But Lily still felt it. So that's when you feel it, when you know that they, they're getting emotionally connected to the characters, which all brilliant animation does, yes. you know, and that's what I think that's what Full Metal, Brother, Full Metal Brotherhood reflects that, that whole, you know, the whole name, right? Yeah, because, yeah, um, yeah, there, there's one scene in particular that, like, a woman named Maxie Whitehead had to take over for Aaron because Aaron hit puberty by the time they did Brotherhood, because, like... Right. Yeah, he was hitting puberty by the time they wrapped that up. So, like the the first oh, project. Yeah, it was good timing because there was a time skip, so it just kind of worked out. But yeah, a voice is practically unrecognizable except for you know his mannerisms. But Maxie really hit her stride, and one emotional scene where where Alphonse fights back against Lust, and he has that whole little speech he does, and that was kind of the moment where it's like, yeah, Maxie's got this. So the, wow, this probably yeah. one, probably the scene that Lily first felt a connection with Alphonse, I would imagine. But we don't have those episodes. We have four of them. We have four out of the sixty-four. So, oh, for, for in the of my of version or yours, the LA version, yours. Oh yeah, no, the, oh. the yeah, Texas. It was recorded in Texas. Yeah, your version right. only has four episodes. Yeah, the Texas one is available everywhere. So, yeah, I, God, I wouldn't even remember the sixty-four. I, uh, Probably, probably didn't have. Well, I know that I did some stuff that, like, whoa, didn't need. That was terrible. You know, I know that. <laughs> so I'm not gonna be so happy to see, could. Yeah, would not want to see that. <laughs> not really. I need a little time to 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 really kind of gather. But I remember that those two main characters that I thought Muriel did. I thought Muriel did a very good job. And I actually thought that Lily was. You know, I mean she'll be the first to admit that she's not a trained actor. You know, I mean, she was learning stuff while she was doing it. So I, I think that, um, you know, for her, that was probably a big stride in, in terms of delivering lines. Um, but, you know, again, it's, you know, the levels are certain things. When a soft line is delivered in Hong Kong, they fucking turn you right up. Mm. So the whole point is delivering a soft line is that it comes out soft. But what we don't we don't get that in Hong Kong because they the levels on a soft line the mixer I see him he he pulls your sound up from his point because he he feels that it's too soft mm -hmm. whereas the whole point would be that's what the it's it covers it, that covers up a lot of stuff that if if the person isn't able to get there that's how you kind of get there yeah. with that and I don't think a lot of people can get there and. And generally, the ones in LA that are paying a lot of money are the ones that can get there, right? Exactly. So, so it's hard to always demand that and, and get that from a talent. Um, so you have to cheat it. But Hong Kong wouldn't allow me to do that. <laughs> so yeah. that's what I would want to do: is that you adjust the levels and you can cover up somebody who can't quite get there. But right. you know, it, it, just with a little bit of level adjustment, I mean, fans would probably go, "What the fuck." You know, but I look at it a little bit differently. So that's my perception of it. Yeah. And you're probably crying right now. <laughs> you're probably going, oh, my God, he just fucking ruined the whole fucking thing. But again, I couldn't. I didn't have control over it. So don't worry about it. I didn't I didn't use that 
as a technique because technicians refuse to do that in Hong Kong. Right. They they brought you back up. So anything that's supposed to emotional sounds like it's booming. So oh. there's so I didn't actually do that. So don't worry. Yeah, I, you I can assumed. wipe those tears. I, 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 <laughs> I assumed. Yeah, there's like there's four episodes of Brotherhood from the Hong Kong dub that are available, and they're really early episodes. So you have the early arc where Ed shuts down the cults, and then there's um, the woman giving birth, and Winry helps, and it, it's all really early stuff. It's not like later stuff yeah i know yeah we i mean they haven't the voice actors haven't gotten the characters down yet either that yeah. takes time it and does that, see most people would have readings and so they're already reading the scripts well in advance and they would like you know and they would understand but these guys weren't we they would look at the script that well when they started to record yeah so it was turn and burn so yeah you start to see but the interesting thing is that because we have to do a, a minimum of four to six episodes that I have with some of the talent. They don't quite get there until the very end because I'm, I'm used, I'm working four to six episodes. So the development, you, you, you rarely see the development in a shift. I mean, right. you, you, by the end of it, you'll see it, but then they don't come back for another seven days, maybe. So they don't have a, a flow. They have to go back and find that rhythm. So it's a struggle to get there. So they're not really there until the end of season one, the beginning of season two. And they're not at their peak at all because yeah. of, 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 of how we had to work. So it's unfortunate. I don't think that it does any, gives any credit to the Hong Kong actors that they could reach a peak performance earlier on if that was part of the process. Right. Like an Ellis process or no, I, Canada I agree. process. Yeah. Cause... Where it's slowed down. But yeah. I would I would love well, to hear guess, yeah, your version. Awesome. Yeah. Oh no, I would not. <laughs> that's the thing. I, I would not. <laughs> I, I think there I think the individual people that were part of it probably would like to, but yes. again, I'm coming from a different thing. So you're what I say to you is I understand where you're coming from. That doesn't matter. It's you're a fan. It does not matter. That's yeah. not you understand the parameters that you're looking at this, but you would like to hear it. Whereas yeah. I'm coming from, oh, I don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it yet. <laughs> Not in this lifetime. Wait. <laughs> so if it's ever found, I hope, I hope you get to enjoy it for what yeah. it is. <laughs> Gives me an excuse. To and don't ever it. send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Gives me an excuse to rewatch it again. Oh, so now is it one of the, is it a series that you've seen more than a few times? Oh yeah, uh, I've watched it with people. I've. Why I went back and watched um with a friend of mine last year. I watched it again for that video I made. I watch, you know, it's just it's it's a fantastic series. It's so it's so good. So yes, I've I've watched it more than once. <laughs> wow, wow. No, I mean, I the thing is, I guess there isn't one. There isn't an animation thing that I've that I've actually gone back and watched. Like you know, like a like a Japanese series. I'm talking about right. Um. And it's interesting because I have done that with live action, but I don't know what the difference is between live action and animation. And I think because of my environment that I was in, I think that I look at it differently and am no longer able to appreciate what it, the, the, the really what it is and not my involvement in it. I've tainted it so much that I can't do that and I can't like really appreciate what and, and not in kind of a not in kind of a like a, a sad way, but in a way that you you as a, a fan appreciate something that I would never be able to at that level. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying? Because I have been in it and I it, it's just no longer will ever be the same thing for me, though. I don't have any regrets for it because as a child, I did have that. That's what actually what why which made me love it, right? You know, didn't it, I don't care what the story was. Did I didn't there was no story. There was no idea of a, an, a, an arc of like a, the you know the Greek L, you know the the peak and then it, you know this is where the you reach this and you move from here. I didn't understand storytelling at all. It didn't matter. I don't know what it was, but it was just the appreciation, and that's kind of where it is now. But for some reason, with animation, I don't have one thing I can go back and say I would like to watch that series. 
as the original because I've never seen anything as really as original. Okay. And yeah, but it, and also because now I'm tainted with it that I, I can't go back and I appreciate the Japanese 100%, but it has to be in these short spurts. Like I watched this, uh, it's a great Netflix series. It's, um, it's, uh, English name is, um, Judy, um, shame, Judy backslash shame. So is it Kiru Nero, Kiru Hara, Kiri Hara? Kirihara. Yeah, uh, Hirihara or so. Ah, oh, fuck. But the English name is Judy, J, Duty, D U T Y backslash second word shame. S H A. Oh, oh Giri Haji. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd say that's one of the best Netflix things. I love it. And it's, it's based on, from a manga. And I like the animation that you go through that. But, I, but that's what I, you know, that is it. Cool. I can't. I can't sit down. Like Netflix has a lot of Japanese. Like I should watch um, One Punch. I should watch. <laughs> I've never seen it. I, I've never it's seen fun. it. It's fun. It's fun. I know. I don't know why my resistance is. I should watch that because everybody talks about it and yeah. everybody says it's fun. It's a. It's not something. It's just fun. It's mind candy. You'll. You'll yeah. really like it. It's. It's, fun. it's a parody of Anpanman. That. That's. The basis of the series so so, so I, yeah i should kind of watch it and i'm just like oh gosh but I, I know what the hesitation is i should just do it and i'm gonna love it i've enforced this rule upon myself <laughs> so no one else is in there you can never watch a japanese program ever i don't know there's no one sitting here screaming this in the ear or handcuffing me so it's just a matter of me doing it and i think that that could be the series that and once that i think the floodgates will open and so maybe the idea that i would probably go and watch what is like you said considered to be the best american version of anime ever yeah. full metal so yeah I, I i could go it could lead me to that but the floodgates have to open out with yeah. maybe one punch one punch could be the one <laughs> No, that was all super, super awesome that you have all these insights and are willing to share all this and talk talk full metal and all that. And um, yeah, we've been talking for almost three hours. Okay, well, there we got another three hour in. That's it. <laughs> there we go. I did have... You got, um, me, you got, me that, you got everything. There's, I, I can't imagine there's anything that I fucking left out of this one. Fan question. Because, dude, probably it's... <laughs> uh, I had I, I did I, I told my fans like hey do you have any questions for Jack and um, Zaragoza five nine six nine asked about the Shugo Chara dub. Given that, that, did Catherine do that one? Because Matt Bailey put on his resume that you were in that or that you were the director. Shugo Chara. Yeah, Shugo Chara. I, I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Shugo. Yeah, what year was that? Because then I would better, I'd better, I'd better be able to go. I'm gonna okay. be a hundred percent real. I just saw it on the resume, and I just put that on your little profile on my video, and I'm just like, everyone's like, wait, there was a dub of Shugo Chara. I'm like, or Shugo Ka Shugo Kara. Sorry, it's C H A R A Kara. Shugo Kara. It's also known as yeah. my my guardian characters. It's a magical, it's a magical girl anime. You know? I know, I've done that. I, would, yeah. I know I have, but the thing is, if it's what it, it could have been, I have to look at. I'll, I'll look it up. Yeah. And see what year it is. I'll send you. Um, I'll send you a Wikipedia you... link because I couldn't tell you about it. Like, because I'm, I'm just not familiar with it. But I, I just remember showing that uh, that came up on screen on the premiere, and people were like, "Wait, there was a dub of this." And I'm just like, I guess. Yeah, it, it, they're probably. It, I, the name's very familiar, and the name sounds very familiar on my um, on my list as well. Oh my god! Okay, but the story centers in one. Yeah, if it was originally run in two thousand and eight, that was Shugo Chara Chan. That was the probably one I did. Well, the two there's a two thousand nine one as well, Shugo Chara Doki. Um, yeah. But my but knowledge on the series is so the original. I, I could have done, yeah, fifty-one episodes sounds like something I would have done. Let's see, yeah. Oh, but they're all fifty-one episodes. Yeah, I always wonder why the fuck just make it fifty-two and then twenty-five. I thought it was usually twenty-six. Usually I might have is. done one for the. The, it, the fifty-one does sound familiar. 
Okay. And if if, if Matt put that in saying that, that it did that, then yeah. I mean, I did. It, it, it was all part of the SDI lot for you know did a lot of stuff for them. Um, but I don't, you know, a lot of it I, there was not credit for it. So a lot of it was going through um, Animax. Right. Yeah, that was that's where the I think that's where that was broadcast. Here I'm gonna take a look at um But it would it would have been Lily, Catherine, and Muriel. And then yeah. maybe and then maybe Candice, but that's who it would have been the three females. Okay. I'm just trying to see take a look here. Um because he has a lot of stuff. And the guys would have been Matthew. Um Ikuto. That's who he plays. Again, the, I I know nothing about this series. Um, this is all my fans. Uh, that they, they're the ones that are really into it. Well, uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, hold on. If you want me to, I can look that up. I mean, I, all I'd be able to do is just go on my computer and say, "Yeah." Well, I have that file under the screen. That's that's what I would be able to answer. Other than that, there. Yeah, I sent a pic. I, I, I sent a picture of that character, but yeah. They asked a few questions oh, so about it. That that, see that that character seems like a lot of characters that I've seen. Yeah, you, you know, it's just, not. Yeah, it's, it's very similar look. Right. Um, so. And, and, and also because you know I was going to be so quickly that so I'm that I think it was Chronicle of Wings too. Remember I said that? No, that was 2017. Oh, so yeah, Chronicle of Wings too. That was the one that Maggie did. Oh, okay. Um, that was one of the things that she had done. Um, but it, you know, I don't know where it went, or even if it did, you know, whatever. Okay, so she, and then the other one that she did, I don't know what. There was one other one that she did do, but I, I don't know what it was called. And I know that was like very. That was like one of the first. You know, it was the very first Japanese series that she had done. And I had done the series, and I was done with it, but I did one of the voices as a male instead of having it as a female. Hmm. I had to go back and do the whole character over again. Oh. So I, so yeah, so that, that was the reason why she would, she came in and said, oh, I did Kobo-chan. You did what? Yeah, I, did Kobo, I did Kobo-chan as well. Oh, okay, so what, what's the one I'm looking for? Sorry. Uh, Shugo Kara. Oh, oh, yeah, I do have it. Oh, yeah, I have done it. Okay, yeah, there are fifty episodes. Okay, it's like two thousand twelve. Yeah, where are you? Where did you? Where are you finding this list? Uh, do you just have it on your computer? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, it's just file that I created with the scripts and stuff. Oh, okay. And, you know, the other... Ginseng. See, I, that Ginseng trailer, that sounds... Oh my gosh. Do you have, like... I, 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 I do kind of remember... No, I don't. I'm wondering if Catherine did it, to be honest. Okay. She might have directed this series. Okay. But... That's 2012. That Matt. That's interesting. That Matt was back that time. I don't. I should say I don't remember at all. But yeah, it's, we did year one, and it, and it was 50 episodes. So I'm guessing it was 13 minutes per episode or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I think they look like they're. Yeah, they're only 24 minute episodes. Right. Oh, Ron, I remember Ron Tedeschi. Yeah, Yori, Kito, oh, Nobuko, the fortune teller. Yeah, I mean, it just, it does ring a bell, but other than that, I don't really. Okay. Because they had, the, the, the person asking had, like, specific questions about the dub. Oh, well, what are they? They said, um, <laughs> given the themes of the anime, were there edits made to that anime? Oh, hold on, I'm bringing it up now. Yeah, it's there. Top it says given some topics oh, of. Shit. Oh my god, I do remember this. Oh. Wow. 
Okay, so what's the question? I do, I, I'm not going to remember, I, I, but I... Yeah, it says, uh, given the themes of the anime, were there edits made to that anime? Given some topics of incest and the whole 5th grader and ninth grader getting together, I can imagine some of the script had to add some changes. Oh, God, yeah. I, there's yeah. a lot. I, 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 yeah, I, if there was something like that going on, and if it was if it was gone to the script, yeah, I mean, I was there was it was there was a QC on that kind of stuff. Yeah, okay. I don't remember. I, I don't remember enough about the series to be spent. But if that was going on, um, this remember this is we were abiding by the Singapore market. Yeah, um, and so we were heavily kind of you know forced in that way to accommodate however we we're we I, I mean i don't even remember but i'm sure i'm sure we did i'm sure we had to rewrite that say it in a different way or don't even acknowledge it right you know so right. but again i mean what they're dealing with is possibly not a not a very good translation and my script writers are working from a not a very good translation there's a lack of information about the series as it started so you don't really know you know so and we're pushing through so there's a lot there's going to be a lot of mistakes is there anything that they're saying specifically that he's asking that that was that, that was kind of the bulk of it was yeah, just, I would uh, yeah. say yeah. I mean, mainly because of the Singapore market. That's what, if there were any changes to stuff, it was because it was the Singapore. It was because it was going through the Singapore, you gotcha. know, sensors. Gotcha. And then his last question is: Do you still keep in touch with the people you worked with during your time doing Hong Kong dubs? Not everybody, no. I mean, I mean, I have them. I mean, I have them on them on, on my phone. Well, no, I, I'm not. No, but the, I. I you, you know, I, I mean, to a degree, I can't say that there's very few people that I would ever not contact. You know what I'm saying? That right. It's not because I'd burn bridges. If the, I, I, there's only a few people that I would say that I burned a bridge with. And according to me, that's a few people. Now, you may speak to a lot of people that go, no, I hate them. But I, I don't feel that way. So I would never feel like I couldn't contact those people, in other words. Okay. And then before we get to the wrap up, I did want to say I actually forgot you played the dad on Chibi Madoko Chan. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, the father. Yeah, I watched that week to week when it was coming out on YouTube. And, oh, you uh, did? Yeah, because yeah. they're which, putting which, it on YouTube. Right. Oh my gosh. See, even with that, so there. Yeah, that we talked about that. That was purely for the Japanese, you know, whatever it was, the tourist industry, and it yeah. was because they were handy. Yeah, so it was, it, and they had to do a lot of editing, a ton of editing on that because you, you know you just a lot of it was cut out. You know, the whole thing that you couldn't even say anything to do with drinking. You know, yeah. it was always a beverage. You know, dad's yeah. having his beverage. You know, and it was, but that's not really what they were saying. So there's so many things that we couldn't say because we were told that we couldn't do that. And the, so, yeah, I played the dad. Um, and I, but the, the only, there's one episode that I think is the, it, it really does, it's the, it's the pilot episode. I don't know if they called it the pilot or episode number one. And it just takes place with, I think it's, it's when you first meet Maruko and her dad go out. And they go to a little, and they're watching the baseball game, and and then um, a few characters that were in it come into the you know to the place as well as eat, and everybody's kind of watching the yes. baseball game. And then the drunk guy comes in at the very end, um, and then the police officer. That to me is the best episode, hmm. dubbed, dubbed. It was it was the it was because it was a different style. They were much flatter in the original. The, you know, and so it wasn't what it came to be, where it became more of, you know, the the the, the, the comedy aspect adding to the, you know, how you deliver, you know, the tone of it and all that. But it was much flatter, more real. I thought that I, that's what I liked. I just loved that. I love the series, but yeah. but not enough. I don't really. I, I just I love that specific episode, and I think dubbing wise, I think that captured every person in that the best way. I think I was able to have spend time on it. Um, I mean, still doing it, you know, whatever, a, a quick shift, but every, you know, it was, it was just an, a really good episode. And I, and I felt that the, the dub on it captured what the original did. I felt, um, even though I wish I had Japanese pseudo Japanese voices in it now, 
you know, mm. I would have loved to have some pseudo Japanese voices do this. And I think as much as I think Simon enjoyed doing it and I, he just, he did it differently. I mean, I try to m mimic as much as I could to the Japanese, but you're only going to get to that point where Simon was creating something, you know, yeah. maybe something that he's, you know, so I think that he took a lot when I was, because he's, I, <laughs> because it, it, you know, he's my business partner. So it's, it's I allowed him to kind of do that. But as the series got on, I, kind of got him back on to mimicking what he was hearing because that's not how they were trained. That's not what they were trained to do. They were kind of done a little bit of more creative where they can get away with but rather than mimicking it. So it's interesting to see the development of that. And also I would love to have a pseudo Japanese do that voice specifically. Right. Not that I'm saying Simon did, didn't do it. I just think for that character, I think, and, and I also think the J Japanese pseudo with, with, with the dad too would have worked because there's that tone. That's the kind of that that tone, that whininess. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That it's not. It's not. I don't know what, but I didn't capture it. And I think it's so hard to capture unless you are a ja unless you you're Japanese and you hear it all the time by your father or your grandfather or whatever, and you're Japanese because you're hearing it and you're doing it. But it's just something that is just like Maruko did it a lot. And we try, you know, but I don't, it was so hard to mimic that, that I found that difficult. But yeah, I loved, uh, yeah, I, I love playing the dad. I thought he, he, he was like Homer before Homer. Yeah. You know, but actually it was created in the 90s. So it was ba probably based a lot on Homer. But you saw, but it was about the 70s. So it still reflected that that mentality in the 70s, that's, you know, that's what men were. You know, they, yeah. they really did. They came home drunk a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, so um, it's interesting to kind of. Yeah. The manga predates The Simpsons by three years. Oh, it does. Yeah. It, so it, you kind of wonder. Yeah. If it kind of, if the Simpsons was kind of jumping on scene, I'm sure there's other stories that they, you, that they, you know, yeah. go, you know, they looked at and thought, okay, that would work. I'm not. Because I mean, the whole, all. the whole thing with the manga is it's based on the now late author's life. She just made a manga about her experiences. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and what she, yeah. What, what Japan was like at that point, Yeah, you know, in time. You know, even that TV show where they just kind of send the kids out, you know, it, it's go down to the shop and get stuff. It's like, yeah, I mean, that didn't even have. I mean, I had that once kind of growing up where my dad said it was at the game. He just said, go get me a beer. And I went and the vendor did it once, you know, when I got there. But yeah. then the second time he went, he goes, you know what? Tell your dad to come up and get his own beer. <laughs> so he didn't know if it was some teenager that was doing this or not. But. It was just that it was nothing like the Japanese were sending them out for, to go and get groceries or something like that right. at the age of, you know, three or four, or whatever craziness that they were doing. But that's what, you know, I think that was interesting what she talked about. And it was, um, again, I failed on that front where I should have been a lot more knowledgeable about Japan society and understanding what the writing and it needed to change. There's a lot of mistakes. And it, it, as you heard, right? I mean, yeah. you probably went, oh, my God, there's like. It just did it. What happened? Three times. It's all different. It's the same name. What are you doing? But see, I was like at that series, I was working 15, 20 episodes ahead with Muriel. Jeez. And she put, yeah, it's crazy. So it was just, it was out of my control. I didn't know what was being said and, and how it should have been said. And so I didn't have the ability to go. And sometimes we did finally do some QC on it. Um, but they were missing stuff too. So uh, yeah, but I, it, it was at first it was heavily kind of QC, but then the more we went on that you still got a QC, but there was not that same. And also, you, you know, I, I, I don't know. You know. I wasn't there for the mixing. I don't know if they chose takes and them hearing something and they chose takes that I, I just don't know. I mean, I'm, I am going to take 100% responsibility. There are like three, there's like, there's not one episode where there's not more than 10 mistakes in it. You know, if you're lucky, I, we only made like five or six, but generally you're looking at like 10 mistakes going through every episode, which is not very good at all. Those are terrible percentages. But I thought the series, I love the series. Yeah, it's, I wish it's so, it's so I precious. Catherine, I, yeah, I thought Catherine did a great job. I, I agree. She, I think she, you know, we tried to get those reactions close. Um, but again, it's there's some nuances. And Miro did an awesome job as well. 
Yeah. The, the, I mean, as the mother and also as the as her best friend. The problem yes. was that it was all, Lily. I mean, Lily did a great job too. I yes. loved her voices. I thought she did. She mimicked it very well. The problem was once I started bringing high school kids and they were playing, you know, um, the rich character. Um, um, uh, what's Hanawa? Name? Yeah, Hanawa. Yeah, and that changed like three different, two different people. No, first Dave McKinney did it when I first started. Yeah, and it was just for me for the first few episodes. Dave McKinney was on it, um, and 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 he did, you know, he because he had done it before for um, Omni. So it was a character he already knew, and he had he was playing another character as well. Oh. Um, so because I didn't have Dave McKinney throughout the whole thing, I switched and I got in some high school guys. One of them now is, um, you know, is doing a lot of stuff for me now, Hunter Purvis, and he started mm. when he was in high school. Um, That's amazing. And he did that, but they weren't really ready to go. And another guy, Daniel, wasn't really. So they they you know, in order to embellish and they other than sounding kind of deadpan. I just it was over the top and it was so over the top that it was like ah wow those characters never got the true performances they needed you know that's a shame and there was only it was only two of them i don't think had the you know it was um the the, the, you know, the kid that's always playing the detective um i forgot his name i can't think of his you name know, either I, I, yeah so it was just because it, it was the same person who did it and i never felt like either of those guys got in, you know, they're able to capture that character properly because they weren't, you know, it was too rushed for them to get to that right. point. So Dave McKinney was the only one that captured it and he only did it very for very few episodes. So he played that character in the older dub of Mariko Chan. Yes. With Omni did, I think they did an episode. Yeah. I think he played that character. Dave Bridges also played the same character. Okay. Um, as well. Dave Bridges played the guy that <laughs> sounded like a grown man, you know. Ah. Oh um, yeah, the the, the onion head guy. He, no, no, not the onion head guy. That was that. I actually played him. Yeah. Um, when he was. Now I hear the, it. Um, no, I'm talking, <laughs> now, now you do hear it. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it took it took you that long to finally hear that. That's, I hear the, that's my fucking normal voice. <laughs> <laughs> I hear the dad more than I hear him, but now I hear oh, it. You, cause like, it yeah. Cause I, yeah, I'm going. To, yeah, I can go into that voice too when I talk. So yeah, um, no, it's, it's the it's the it's the one that's always you know the mo you know ah, it's, it's Dave Bridges played both in the Omni version. That's and amazing. I think, and I think Dave McKinney said he played um, those two characters, and so th that was the only thing. And Dave Bridges was from the start to the finish. But again, you know, it's about the scheduling and getting certain number of episodes in because you're only talking. It's not they're not full episodes. You know, it's two parts to an episode. Yeah. But they're not considered. Yeah. So I had, you know, if I didn't have him the first part, you know, and he wasn't in the second part, I probably changed up character list, you know, and there's one specific character that I know that I did like four different voices for. It was the, uh, the four, you know, the park ranger guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure. I there, was yeah. a few, there was a few other ones too, like Dave McKinney. Did the old man? Um, uh, the the guy's always raking the leaves at first. Yes, but then I had Michael Zook come in because Michael okay. Zook really was only going to play just the uh, the voiceover. Um, but then I found more roles for him, and so the shift of Dave McKinney and all that kind of me going and getting high school kids or y younger guys that I was able to pay le lesser less fee than the normal rate that allowed me then to kind of bring Michael back into the picture mm. um, and take on a bigger role. So gotcha. a lot of it has to do with, you know, with, with, with a number of episodes. Yeah. You know, the, obviously Catherine was going to be in every episode. And then later I got in, I had her try to do the first, the first episodes first because she's the main person. But unfortunately, because summer scheduling always came in once it kind of Philippines kind of took over the control of in me doing it. Um, it became more of a shit show because they didn't understand the system I was using. And so they wanted me to abide by their system. I'm like, I'm not doing that. You know, this is, we're almost at the end. I'm not switching what I've done to abide by whatever. And so they were very last minute in what they wanted in terms of name changes. And I'm saying, you can't change the title. You got to do it in English. And they're like, no, no. And I said, but that's not English. And they, you know, we did the name, we did the character like, um, 
Muruko uh, is supposed to do all the, the names, the titles. Yeah. But we had one thing, and I wasn't there. That it was um, Miro did it. Huh. I wasn't there huh. because they, they because it was the name change, and we correct we did it in English, but they didn't want it in proper English. They would leave out the articles or whatever they were doing, oh. and so it was more of a Japanese feel. And gotcha. so Muriel did that season of it because I I was already I was on holiday. I agree. Oh. and they wanted and they needed to mix. So that's why she reads all the title cards. Yeah, for that season. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because we weren't supposed. It's, it's supposed to be. Since that, that was the kind of shit show they were, we were dealing with. It they were changing the name. They given us the names. We followed. We, we corrected them, which they used to do, and we got approval. But then once we recorded it with Catherine, and I don't know why Catherine just didn't do it. I wasn't there for it. So I don't know why it was just like Kat, Muriel was there. Catherine wasn't coming in for another few days and they had to have it done to mix and send off. So, it, you know, it was just when again, I was like, Jesus, come on. So it was this bullshit like that, that I felt like, you, you know, it, we had to kind of, and, and finally I lost it with them. I think that they, 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 they stopped my ability to communicate with them huh. because it was just, you know, it, it, it got to that point. It became wow. very ugly because they, everything was always last minute. It was always right during the summer holidays when I was saying, give me the materials now. So at least I can get the scripts written. Then I can get where I need to get with Catherine and Muriel, you know, because Catherine needed to do it first. So it was all about things that I understood that I needed because I, I, I wanted to be Catherine needed to do the lines first because everything she was the blueprint for how pronunciations were going to be made. But as it w turned out, I didn't, couldn't have that. I didn't have that luxury. So Muriel was doing stuff before everybody else was. And so the name pronunciation, that's, that's like I said, the, that's major reason why that you get three pronunciations, you know, with different characters. Yeah. Cause I was like, oh. you know, so, and I single tracked everybody. And, and so there's a lot of mistakes. So, but I like the series. I like it a lot. Yeah. I think, I think it was fun to do it. And I think that, you know, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was that's excited to get in touch with so Simon. You, you, watch, you watch it. You, you watch it. Sorry. Uh, oh, I watched the whole thing. Yeah. I watched the whole dub. So you, so did you get the? See, I don't know what, what was uploaded. There was this, there was one like nine or thirteen episodes that I had to change mirror. Well, change mirror twice. One was another girl. Uh, she also did all Catherine's. I mean, uh, Miro's characters. Um, yeah, where very it's, very it's, late, it's, like twenty twenty or early twenty twenty one. There was a brand new episode yeah. out of nowhere. Muriel wasn't in it. Yeah, it was. was it, it's, I changed twice as well. That there was another girl that replaced Muriel. That was at least the Kate H was decent. She was. I think she worked. This other girl, um, actually, she was a, a, a Jane. I think that's it. Indian. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a group where all the last names are Jane. Yeah. Um, and it's a very. Yeah. So she was. She did it, and she had never done this before. Huh. And yeah. It. She sticks out, but. She was going to stick out anyway because Miro did such a good job, and anybody yes. who didn't know the character just was not going to be able to capture what the real Japanese did, you know, for the mother right. character and the and the girl and their best friend's character. Yeah. So yeah, there was that, and that she was not, she couldn't, she didn't have the ability to pull it off. But it was only for thirteen episodes, and there was all the episodes that had something wrong with it. Like there was somebody smoking or there was nudity mm -hmm. um, or there was content in the tub with the daughter and the father. Mm -hmm. um, they cut a lot of that stuff out too. Huh. So it was all, it was those 13 episodes that they just didn't know what to do with. And there's uh, let's just do it. I don't know if that's what had been uploaded. See, I'll have to look through who it. Who, I, who, I, who I, would I have just, uploaded it? It's the, it's an official account called Chibi Marco channel. Um, yeah, seventy-five episodes are on YouTube. Oh no, I, no, I actually have seen stuff. Right, no, oh right, 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 right. I have seen that. I have seen a few of the episodes. Yeah, yeah I, that's been. A, th that's where I saw the pilot, and then I saw some other episodes. I'm like, oh shit! Now there were five episodes that we started without the proper M and E. There was no separate M and E oh. track. So in five episodes, you're gonna hear everybody shout through the whole huh. episode because it's it, it was difficult to realize that 
you didn't have to shout because we did, we, all we heard was the full mix. So we're mm -hmm. hearing everything mixed together. And we usually don't. We just, you, that's separate. Your vo the voice is separate from the music and effect track. So you hear the voice as it is. And so we don't really know the level of projection until you hear that because if it's a scene that you think requires projection, maybe you really don't. So we tend to, the, the, there's five episodes where there's a lot of shouting. Just hmm. if you I'll have to, noticed that one. Yeah, I'll, I might, I might rewatch the series and give it a listen. But oh, no, 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 don't. You don't need to. You, <laughs> it, it, don't, don't need to go through it and figure out the bullshit in it because there's a lot of it. Just leave it the way it is. If if you if you're fond of it, leave it the way it is. Don't yeah. don't need to go. You don't need to go back. Trust me, it's not worth it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I am I am very fond of it. That was, the, the, I was going through some shit at the when that was coming out. So it was oh, nice cool. just having something to do every Wednesday and seven o'clock, get dinner ready and get a friend over and watch um Marco Chan. Oh, nice! Awesome. Yeah, that's cool. And that yeah. and that's what it, it's a, it's a family it's a family program. It's yeah. all about what what people experience. And, you know, because that carries up until adulthood. All that shit you experience as a kid, it actually goes up until adulthood. And I think it affects people. Don't realize how much. I'm not saying that should be excuse for anybody's behavior, but at the same time, when you see a program like that, and you see there's l little nuances where you go, "Oh my god." You know, and it, and if it helps that person get through a certain point, but yeah, all that shit, and I think since childhood, definitely kind of carries it through adulthood. But a lot of people don't want to fucking confront that because yeah. a lot of people don't have time. You know, I notice all my friends don't. They have they have kids. Yeah. You know, and they have a job. You know, and that just fucking takes a lot of time. Yeah. And you just go, oh shit! How are you supposed to deal with anything self improvement? You don't. Because last thing you want to do is self improvement shit. You want to fucking go on holiday and just. Fuck it, just relax. You yeah. Fuck it, because I, I just went. And I know how my my cousin has kids. I'm like, oh my god, this is fucking work. The, fuck, this is hard work. This is just like so. I don't think a lot of people self reflect in their childhood, so they carry around a lot of shit, that baggage, the emotional stuff that they don't lose that, and and it carries on to your 30s, your 40s, your 50s until right. you really. It, Fucking until you confront that shit, but a lot of people just don't have that luxury. I do. I got that luxury. I did that. Now I got to go fucking back and look at the work I produce. That's the, the that's the thing I get to do now with my life. Get to look at all the shit work that I. I don't even want to look at Shugu Charo. I don't want to look at that. I can't. I don't remember it. And there's probably the reason why I don't remember it because it was such a bad job. There were some things that you go, oh my god. I can't go back and look at that, but I think that it's important too. So I think that I'll go self-respected, but I'm happy to hear that that ver the English version that we did, yeah. um, you know, helped you in a way. That's, yeah. that's really, I'm sure everybody would be happy to hear that. Yeah. I told Simon that cause, uh, Tomozo is my favorite, <laughs> the grandpa. Oh, he is. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I like him a lot. <laughs> so, so, okay. Now, okay. So you're a fan. What did you when I say I wish that I had a Jap pseudo Japanese voice on that compared to what Simon did with it? What do you what do you what would you prefer done? I like what Simon did. I liked his old man voice. Well, motherfucker, he's not he's gonna love that shit, and I'm not gonna tell him that. I hope you didn't tell him that because he'll be going around doing that Maruka voice all the time when I speak to him. <laughs> I already I already he'll do it every him. fucking time. Yeah, I, I already interviewed him. Did, I, did he, did, did, of course, of course, he did the voice for you, didn't he? Yeah, he did. I asked him to do a haiku. <laughs> he did, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he he did a haiku. He did a haiku. Ah, he did haiku. Well, I'm sure it was ad lib though. His haiku. I, I but, asked him. I asked him the night before if he could do a haiku, and he he did think of one. Oh, that's awesome. Now, see, he can come up with like, if you allowed him to change stuff, he would have changed it. He would have totally written that character for himself, you know, so he would have been playful with words, a translation. He probably wouldn't have stuck to the original good writing that it actually was. Um, that's what he would love to do. So doing Tomozo was it was a compromise. You know, I, I really wanted to stick to those reactions. I just felt it was so important to get exactly like what we were trying to do with you know, every other character, hear that original and get that reaction. Whereas I think Simon allowed his character to take over the reaction too.
Mm -hmm. So we didn't hear a lot of the original Tomozo. So you, you like you like that character the most. Now, did you like that character the most because the English version, or did you like that character the most because you had heard the Japanese version as well? I like him because I like the character. I like the I like the grandpa character. Okay. Yeah, I just and, I just and you like him. It, yeah, I mean, I, I I I see. There was a borderline. I just there there was a board. Yeah, I I. I I like the dad character more, to be quite honest. It was more obvious. I yeah. think that that character was a very obvious character. And I think, I think Grandpa was too. But I think there was a little bit of a conflict with him in some ways. But anyway, I, 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 it's just interesting the, how you like what Simon did. That's, that's really that's interesting. Yeah. I, I would be, Simon would be the first one to tell you that Jack would probably – Jack would, did not like that. He wanted, I mean, not that I disliked it. I just wanted it to be sound. I didn't want Simon. You know, I didn't, that's not what the character was. But I think that Simon, because he, he latched onto it and he felt it, I think that there was a certain amount of freedom and respect that I have to give to somebody, you know? I mean, he, know, he, mo he knows much more than I do about <laughs> this stuff. You know, he brought me into so as much as I considered him to be undirectable, I called him undirectable, and yeah. that's what I kind of put on Simon. He's undirectable because he grew, <laughs> he you know, he, he grew up with different things, and you know, so I could never. He he, you know, he would take it, like I said, it took seasons to get where he was at least going to mimic the original reaction. Yeah. Otherwise, his original stuff that he did was is was not. Which you know, it's good that you enjoyed that character. I love that. That's awesome. That is so cool. Yeah, I just I'm that, sure that he'll, is... he'll love it. I'll tell him. I'll tell him that because yeah, that's always nice to hear that you know a fan does that you know they watch it and they they appreciate that with you you know the, the voice actor. Is Literally, done. my yeah. opening message to Jack on not Jack um Simon on Instagram was P.S. I love you, Estimoso. <laughs> oh, that's right. That, well, that's the way to capture his heart. That's I mean that's it. That's all you got to say. It's like yeah. fucking Tom Cruise. You know, you had him right there. Didn't have to do anything. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, he, I'm sure the interview went very smoothly because it now. Did. Yeah, he he yeah. he has a lot he had a lot to say and I learned a lot and he um yeah, we're still we're still in contact. I know he's doing stuff, but um might follow up with him today. Well, good. Yeah, but um I'm, I'm glad to hear I'm, I'm so happy to hear that you did that. I I'll, I'll I'll tell him as well. Yeah, I told him I spoke to you that you know that you like that character. That yeah, you liked what he did with it. But I, I may not tell him like right now. That's fine. I'll tell him when he, he, he later on when I know. See, right, he's gonna bring coffee, and and this is Vietnamese stuff. This is like wow, this is real good stuff. So when I get that package, that's when the compliment. Comes. If I'm handing out compliments, I I, I should be wise with them. Especially like this, because he will hold on to this one for a very long time. And he may even start to use the voice, like that <laughs> one line. He, he may start to do a fucking, whatever he does, Tomoso does, Haku, he's going to do it every day <laughs> if I do that. So I got to be, I got to, I got to wait for the goods to come in. Then I'll give the compliment. So at okay. least that, that will be the, that will be the pay. That will be the kind of like, okay. Yeah. I'll listen to it. But I wouldn't be surprised. He could come up with a haku. I'm pronouncing it wrong, but he would do something like that. Yeah. He loves to, he loves to Moso, but he does, he does mess up, mess up um, Ruko Chan, the name a lot. He, 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 he'll still do it. He'll, he'll still mess up the name, um, but he'll make a joke of it. But no, he, he messed it up. Yeah. He's not very good with Japanese names. And yeah. he always gets, why do you have to follow Catherine? What does she know? Well, she knows a lot more than you do. <laughs> <laughs> and me. That's funny. But yeah, yeah thank, thank so. you for all this little info about uh, Madoko Chan. I really loved that that show. I, I, st I still love it. I, I don't watch it because there's no English subtitled version. My Japanese is not good enough, and I also don't know where to watch it anyway. So... Just a quick note, this was recorded in August of 2023 before Crunchyroll began to simulcast Marco Chan in America. But, um, yeah, well, no, I mean, yeah, exactly. If it's, it's one of those things that I think that it, it's just, 
yeah, I, I enjoy it. If it, like for you, it, it it got you through so it's 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 an important. It has its reasons, just like yeah, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood has some it has a significant importance to you as well. So yeah. that's cool. Good. Nice. So time to go through my uh, wrap up questions. <laughs> We're on the phone for a while. Um, okay. So what is on the horizon for you? Any upcoming projects or anything you're working on that you could talk about? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I am should be hopefully I should be finishing this cartoon as this Thai China um, joint venture. Um, it, the name changed so much that I don't even know what it is anymore. I don't even think it's author in the seven chicks, um, but that's what it really was going to be. It's a five-year process. It finally got the censor notes back from China, hmm. um, and yeah, I got, there's a lot of there's there's a lot of changes. So I don't know if that wraps it up, but that's the kind of thing that I'm. I feel like I need to kind of stick around for. But other than that. Everything's. Just, I just worked on Goldfinger, just a little ADR on it, not much at all. Okay. And then I recently did another Chinese called Red Dragon. Um, they did something about the Monkey King. And I don't know what they're doing with that now. That that was a whole shit show in terms of that I am finally the voice of Monkey King. But we needed to have Hunter kind of do this in between voice, but we didn't do that. But there may be a version of that where all of a sudden you're just going to hear my voice as the voiceover rather than the actual Monkey King at a certain point. Um, but that was for Red Dragon, and I don't know what's happened with that. And it was it was the guy is a great guy who did it, and it was his pet project. And by the end of it, I because I, I, it was supposed to be a guide track, it wasn't a guide track. And, it, you know, so anyway, it's, it's it, I don't know what's happened to it. And it should be the whole thing doesn't need to be redubbed. Just Monkey King at a certain point, because I used a young kid to do him as a younger uh, Monkey King. And that works perfectly. Then it's my voice. And that does not work perfectly, unfortunately. OK. And we were having a problem with the opening writing and what we wanted to say. Um, distributor Beijing was one pushing this. So I don't know what's happened to it. So. Th- that was my last kind of other big project. Other than that, nothing. So that's your that's the answer to your question. <laughs> okay. Anything um anything you want to say to the people listening? Oh well, I mean that's that's a bit dangerous. I've been do- I've been doing this for three hours and thirty four minutes. <laughs> so I don't think there's anything else I can say. Is there? I mean, Jesus. I mean, I've said everything. Like thanks for watching or something. Oh, oh, that. that <laughs> what you mean? Yeah, thanks for <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Well, no, I mean, I, I mean, I, if you made it this far, hopefully you're going to edit this stuff down. Oh so yeah, gonna... no, this is going to be cut down to yeah. like an hour, hour and a half. But yeah, so the, yeah, they're getting like not, they're not, yeah, they don't have to live through all this. I shouldn't be thanking them. I should, you know, saying Jesus, you should have turned off a long time ago. What is wrong? I I did not said interest anything interesting for three and a half hours. So if if there no, I actually there is something of interest, but it, it is kind of you know that on pond mon stuff is going to go over really well with people. Yeah, well, that, I, I I do have to yeah, like there are a lot of Catherine Fu wrote scripts as well, um, but I do have to, yeah. There's a lot of other people that were involved in the whole process that I didn't name, but um, but like, the fact I, you, you know, got like the said, info because a lot of people can't remember this stuff, so. Yeah. So and then, and it's and you don't know need and oh yeah. Here's the other thing. So thank you for listening. And the other thing, don't go thinking you need to find this stuff. Just no. There's nothing wrong with letting it. You know, don't. I'm I'm warning you. You not. It's it's more of just let it what you think it's going to be. Don't actually allow it to be really what it is. Just it's not worth it. It really isn't. Just let it be. That's. But I'm, that's what my advice is. Don't be looking for this stuff. And you're okay. like, no, everybody's going to look for this stuff. And Pogo, Ch- no, not everybody, because that's that's ridiculous. I don't put that much importance. But I, I'm sure if if you are interested in this stuff, yeah. I mean, remember that it's transgression. It's not the original. So, right. you know, if you love the original, this is, you know, it's not the original. Gotcha. So it's yeah. not going to be satisfy- satisfying. 
Yeah. Well, that that's all I had. So thank you so much for the. I think it's the longest conversation I've done for an interview. Well, yeah, it's three hours and thirty six minutes and seven, eight, nine, ten seconds. Yeah, nice. count it down. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I, you know what? I mean, I, it's you know, I, I'm happy to do it, but that's like six hours of just me yakking. Good luck with this editing. That's all I'm saying. Have fun. <laughs> Thanks for listening, and you know, and it, I, 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 I'm happy that, and and you know that you hopefully you can get something from this, and I'm, yeah, I'm happy that. There will be somebody that will find this interesting. Um, All right. Yeah, and good luck with it, Dean. Yeah. All right. We'll take it easy. I know it's late there. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you again to Jack Murphy for taking the time to do this interview, and thank you for listening. If you like what you heard, please be sure to rate this podcast five stars if and when it goes back on to a proper podcast service, and subscribe via your favorite podcast app to know first when an episode is posted. If you want to hear more info about English doves, check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Yui Haruhara. If you're an actor that has worked in Asia and would like to be a guest on the podcast, please send an email to yuiharuhara at gmail.com. If you're a listener and would like to know when I have upcoming guests, please follow me on Twitter at yuiharuhara or stay tuned to my YouTube community tab. From there, you'll be able to ask us questions that may be featured in their interview. Also, if you'd like to support the show further, consider joining my Patreon, patreon.com slash yuiharuhara. Until next time, take care.